cigars all around. Cheers, y'all. Ladies and gentlemen, to this fine radio program, podcast, and video extravaganza known worldwide as the world famous Hi, Mom. Smoking and Toasting. Welcome to our show, all about craft beer, fine spirits, and hand rolled cigars. It is show number 240, which has us definitely That's halfway, halfway to, to 300. 300 yes. yes, for sure. Uh, welcome to it. It's the 1st of July, and we have guests in the studio. And this is going to, I can already tell, this is going to be one of those shows. Man, what kind of madness is this? <laughs> so, we have uh, Chris Morris here to my immediate left. Welcome to the show again. It's hey, nice to have you, you back. Yeah, I mean, after all the trouble I've caused, I, mean, I don't know why you keep inviting <laughs> me back. Amazingly, you're, you're still on the invite list. And I have no idea who this person is. He vaguely resembles Greg Duxakis, but, you know, he looks completely different than the last time I saw him. so He looks, he looks very relaxed today, doesn't he? He does. I just stopped in to use the restroom. Uh, okay. And they, they, they whisked me in and said, quick, we need something. All yeah. we got is Morris today. Yeah, all right. Well, <laughs> well, well when they said you get the quarantine 15, I thought they were talking about pounds. Docs was like inches of hair. Yeah, inches of hair. That's right. That's right. When I, uh, I think when we met, your hair was just short and kind of bushy on top, right? I think the word you're looking for is normal. Normal. <laughs> <laughs> that is the no, word this, I'm this, for. No, this actually, this was uh, obviously, it, this it was uh, born out. Out of, uh, I don't want to say necessity, uh, I'm not sure what the word is, but just there was nobody cutting hair for well, a few I, months yes, there. Yes, that is absolutely you know? true. So, but it, it, it was like, you know, it's like, well, okay, why not? Because in, in my youth, when I was younger and prettier, I used to have long hair on occasion. And I thought, okay, you know what? One more time. One, <laughs> once more into the abyss. And so now, Suzanne, or Zany as I call her, she loves it and won't let me cut it. Uh, I'm okay. so over it. And I want to know, how do people with long hair deal with this? When it's down, the back of my neck is hot. When it's up, it's cold. Right. It's yeah, great it's, in the winter. <laughs> it's great in the winter, uh, yes. So, you know, I, until what, uh, just a couple years ago, yeah. I had long hair for That's you know, right. most of my entire life. And uh, the first thing that... Uh, uh, it took me a while to get used to is in the winter time I started really 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 liking hoodies because the back of my neck was just cold all the time I was so yeah <laughs> yeah yeah for sure See, well, that just seems like a pitch. failed failed opportunity because yeah. I was docs I would talk about how I started working for this fantastic rum company and decided to be a pirate so I grew my hair out. <laughs> <laughs> well I did the opposite of you actually my hair was long until I was about yeah 25 26 and then I cut it it was one of those things where I looked in the mirror and said yeah, it's time. You know, I, I was pulling it off up until about then, but at that point, I was like, nah, yeah, yeah, I don't but, want but, to be but that back guy. then, that was the style, I mean, along right. with the fluffy shirts and the long coats and, and the knee socks. I had all of that. Yes, <laughs> I had all of that. But you look good, though. Hashtag old joke. Okay, yeah, sorry. that's right. <laughs> don't forget leg warmers. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. I still have some of those tucked into a, a drawer somewhere. Well, welcome to the show. Docs is here. We are, uh, of course, uh, he's one of our favorite guests, and we have, uh, you know, no offense to Chris Morris, of course, uh, but uh, uh, he's one of our favorite guests. We always talk rum and and some awesome you know cognacs and other spirits. Uh, today, though, he he actually came to us with an idea. It's great when guests give you an idea and you go, "Oh, that's a show. Good. I don't have to think of something." Right. Um, but no, his idea was that we uh, kind of do the reverse of what we normally do, which is we talk about a particular line of spirits and maybe talk about the different companies um expressions expressions and the well the different uh uh casks or or barrels that they've been aged in today we're doing that in the reverse he's got, he's brought in some spirits from other companies yeah. that have been uh resting in some of your uh barrels from yeah. your company so it's a it's a pretty interesting uh you know little twist yeah. there we're, we're very proud of our spirits but we're also very proud of some of the people we've partnered up with and swapped barrels yeah um, it, it's a it's a huge compliment uh it's something that alexander's you know honored by and quite frankly so are we and and he just takes it very seriously in fact he's going to be in texas for a hot minute coming august just for one day to uh go say hello to a facility that we swapped barrels with recently i can't tell you which one but uh and he's coming just mm. for the day it's his first trip to texas mm. in over two years yeah uh, well, so it's well, gonna be exciting yeah so, so that's that's great. So in addition to your bag of goodies, Chris Morris comes in wheeling a bag of goodies. I don't even know what I, – I know you have a an out-of-print gin here. Uh, uh, for the record, I just kind of grabbed random th – and like – Actually, since we're, since we're doing Friends and we're switching everything up, does that mean Docs is making cocktails today? 
I, I, I don't know if it's cocktails. You're, you know, are you, are you known for cocktails? Am I known for cocktails? Yeah. So I'm known to consume them. And once, <laughs> you know, and once upon on the, a time to pay the bills, I, 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 would, I had to make them. Yeah. But I will say this. I was never, ever, ever, ever of the caliber, caliber of uh, bartender is this young man right here? Well, this is a mixologist so, for sure. He, what he's what he's trying to do here is he's he's trying to pick a hard song for me to sing at karaoke when he mm-hmm. goes. Is, is Doc's going to do cocktails today? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Doc's will be performing Bohemian Rhapsody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, by the way, speak, just speaking of which, it's such a random thing, but I recently saw a clip on YouTube of Pink, the singer, yeah, yeah. Uh, from her one one of her live shows. Doing Bohemian Rhapsody, oh, wow. and I thought, no way, no way, dude. She pulls it oh, off man, for sure. She's great. Anyway, I, I've, I've always kind of liked her, but I mean, she pulls the whole thing off. She's got a great band, so that helps. But uh, anyway, uh, that's neither here nor there. We got a show. We're talking barrel Is aging. It better than what, who was it? Was it Kanye that did that? Bohemian Rhapsody. Oh, I, I didn't see that, and I'm pretty sure I don't want to. No, <laughs> it was. Oh, no, no, you you have to see. Right, it. Hold on, I'm gonna let you finish. But Queen had the best Bohemian Rhapsody <laughs> of all time. <laughs> Uh, they, they did it okay. I always, I always used to say, you know, back in the '70s, I always used to say, dude, if that band could find a singer, they would be awesome. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Uh, so anyway, we uh, we are going to have quite a show because there's like bottles of bottles of goodies everywhere. There's beers. This is going to be kind of like one of those Chris Hart shows where you taste so many things and don't even have a chance to like comment on any of them because you got to move on to the next Who? one. I'm not familiar. You're not familiar? With, have you heard of Chris Hart? Never. Okay. No. Ian? Okay. Uh, Chris? Well, I'm pretty sure nobody cares about that guy, but uh, <laughs> at least that's what we've been told. So, so we're going to smoke in a toasting where we refuse to do a hard pour and have never heard of anyone. <laughs> let, 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 let's, let's, let's keep dogging him until he, he, he makes a comment. Okay, yeah, we're yeah, not going to yeah, let him take comments. Until somebody gets a hold of him. They're, they're talking trash about you. By the way, speaking, speaking of which. Speak, the, uh, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say the, uh, uh, the Whiskey Social Yes, mm-hmm. tickets it's are on. on sale. Tickets yes. are on sale now, so you can go to the uh, uh, Whiskey Social or the Houston Bourbon Society uh, Facebook page, and you'll get all the information uh, there that you need. Uh, I was going to say uh, we hope that, that Chris is enjoying the show today. I actually hope my wife, wife is watching because Docs has already gifted her a bottle of her favorite rum, which is the uh, okay. Stiggins Fancy Pineapple from uh, from Plantation Rum. And it's it's just wonderful. It's See, just I wonderful. hope my wife is watching so I can say happy birthday. Ah, oh, uh, yes, we're we uh, today we're, is her actual birthday. We're planning to celebrate that yes. soon, aren't we? I'm looking forward to it. So just for fun, guys, I want y'all to know that right now I'm being texted by Elena from Garrison Brothers. She's trying mm-hmm. to trip me up the way that I tried to trip her up, or successfully did trip her up mm-hmm. when she was on the show. <laughs> so just for fun, I'm gonna keep texting her back and forth now and then, probably some inappropriate memes that sort of thing. But I'm keep the conversation going okay. at the same time. Just so to show, Ian, just so to show her I'm a professional. <laughs> Let me just float this out there. I don't want to. Like, do any spoilers or anything, but Garrison Brothers. Nope. Mm. No, it's not them. Not them. Oh, okay. Well, that oh, yeah, uh, I'm sorry. At this time, I can either confirm or deny that. Okay. Sooner. <laughs> <laughs> well, it would have been cool. Uh, that's all I'll say. Yeah. Well, uh, welcome to the program. It is show number 240. We are brought to you by MyCigarShirts.com. Great shirts for cigar lovers on the web. You can check them out, and uh, they all start under 20 bucks. It's uh, MyCigarShirts.com because... Cigars. Yes, sir. Um, we will be tasting some beers today, somewhere in between all of this bottle madness. Uh, we'll be tasting... Uh, st- Stone Brewing has one that I, I I don't know how long this has been out, but I've not tasted this before. Have you? It's their Dayfall Belgian White. Hmm. I've never seen it. Uh, okay, we'll, we'll we'll be getting to that from Saint Errant Brewing Company. One that I will admit, and I'll show you the can in a little bit. Uh, I chose for today's show simply because I loved the can design. <laughs> uh, you know, which goes to show you that can have an impact on sales, yes. right? Uh, it's their Terror Dome uh, Double Dry Hopped IPA, and then from Smog City Brewing. A beer called Clock is Ticking. It's a bourbon barrel aged imperial porter with coconut and coffee. Wow. Well, you know that sounds terrible, right? Yeah, I know. I, I know you're terrible. I know you're not into that at all. Uh, we will do our uh, what has turned out to be uh, against, you know, all expectations, one of the most popular uh, segments on the show. We will do drinking news. That's your drinking news musical teaser. It's supposed to like connect to something in your brain that makes you go, "I got to stay and, and listen about to that." To happen. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, our drinking news teaser headline today is "I the Police." 
So. I, I, the police. I, the police. I was waiting for you to say something else. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's it. I, the police. Uh, other things to talk about, the Rob Report, which I love to I love to mention just because it's one of those magazines that uh, is designed for people who are so wealthy that they own their own, you know, corporate, you know, private planes and jets mm-hmm. and, and yachts and things like that. And that probably amounts to less than 1% of their subscribers. The other people are the ones who want to look like they're, they're that, uh, they're they're that wealthy. They were so they people. leave it sitting on the coffee table table when you come over to visit. But the Rob Report always does a fairly ridiculous list of cigars every year, and they've chosen their uh, best cigars of 2021. So it'll be interesting to see what they do. Because with the Rob Report, money is no object. So. <laughs> and we're going to sample all those today, right? Now, yeah, right? that's exactly right. <laughs> uh, yeah, We it, need to have the Rob Report sponsor us. It would be the most expensive show ever if we sampled all the Rob amazing. Report's favorite cigars. <laughs> yeah. I think, didn't they have one one year that was over $1,000? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. yeah, now you're just showing off. Uh, plus, there's a new uh, list out of the top five summer craft beers for 2021, so we'll try to get to that, and uh, new cigars to watch for. And speaking of cigars, Ian, I assume that you had an opportunity to smoke something interesting this week. You know, I did. I went by uh, Casa this morning, and uh, right there on NCAP. I love their NCAP. They're, they, they, it's they a good way to just see new what's stuff new. And yeah. random stuff up there. and It's fun because... You know, sometimes I'm just looking for something different, something I don't usually look at, and mm-hmm. I picked up a Monte Cristo. Oh, um, I they don't have always a few up... of those at Casa yes. de Monte Cristo. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I don't always pick up Monte Cristo. It's one of those ubiquitous <laughs> brands where you know, I mean, Monte Cristos are Monte Cristos. Plus, a lot of them are a little on the lighter side too. Well, but know? they've done a lot of line expansion over the past couple of years, and yeah. a lot of other uh, uh, blenders to get involved in their. So in I their saw one that too. I hadn't seen before, and mm-hmm. it was the 1935 anniversary. Mm-hmm. This was the number two, so it's a, a Bellicoso, maybe mm-hmm. uh, torpedo uh, on the yeah, end. Yeah, and uh, six and a half or six and an eighth by fifty two is the size. Uh, it was a, a, a Nicaraguan puro, mm-hmm. so all Nicaraguan tobacco all the way through. Gorgeous dark brown wrapper with slight reddish hue, a little bit of veins running through it. A soft box press, so not like a real hard, but kind of a soft, um, uh, pretty. Uh, pretty cigar though, oily, uh, silky smooth to the touch, medium firmness overall, golden black label. The black label is kind of neat. The black part of the label, if you look at it, and, and you kind of like let the light shine on it just right, you see some little Florida leaves in there and stuff like that. It's kind of nice. cool. So the uh, pre-light sniff on this, I got earth, barnyard leather, hints of mocha and chocolate and wood. And man, did it smell good! Mm. Like it was right there. I found that Nicaraguan cigars are some of the most pleasant for just just that pre-light sniff. Just you know, the smell. they, they yeah. just had they just have a richness to them. That's the, uh, the pre-light draw on this. I used a, a clip. It was a pretty light draw overall. I got a lot of sweet coffee, cocoa powder, creamy, uh, creamy kind of flavors, oak, those kind of things going on in there. It was pretty complex, right? Right, just from the nose to begin with. The uh, initial light on this. Cedar and tangy pepper were the blast on this. I mean, mm. cedar is actually even before the back, the, the, the pepper. before the pepper. Wow. Yeah, it was it was a huge woody note going right on. Massive smoke coming out of this. Just a few puffs, and the smoke was just massive and silky and huge. Um, uh, a nice nuttiness. The retro hail of cedar and campfire. I will tell you right off the bat, right from the top of this cigar, this is not your normal Monte Cristo. This is Mm -hmm. immediately the the fullest flavor Monte Cristo. Because, yeah, your sort of standard Monte Cristo is kind of a mild to medium. Yeah, Yeah. it's if it's medium, it's usually a little less than the middle of medium. Mm -hmm. Um, And they're good cigars, but this is definitely, like, starting off the beginning of the cigar and just judging from the retro hail, like, this was right at full flavor. Like, this is a bold cigar. Uh, the first third of the cedar, dark chocolate followed by pepper, powdered sugar, uh, a little underlying nuttiness, retrohale cedar and sweet coffee and pepper, solid ash, perfect burn. Mm. I mean, the burn on this <clears> cigar, <throat> I'm going to go ahead and give this one up right away, was like a laser the entire time. Just yeah. absolutely straight. Absolutely perfect. That's great. The ash was solid. I tipped the ash three times for the entire cigar. Wow. And, um, and your shirt, you're wearing a black shirt. I see no, no remnants ash. of ash That's on your shirt. That's how you know it was a solid yeah, ash. Yeah, yeah, I love it. <laughs> uh, the second third of this, dry oaky notes develop here, followed by bitter chocolate and sweet coffee. This is a bold, full-flavored cigar with complex collection of flavors. And I just, I just, uh, I put a call in there and said, you know what, I'm just going to toss out flavors that I'm getting from it at this point and not try to make it eloquent. Uh, cinnamon, cedar, oak, coffee, sweet cream, pepper, leather, tea leaf, nuttiness, cocoa it's a powder. a lot of flavors. Bitter chocolate. 
Solid ash, perfect burn. Nice. Yeah, I just want because there was so much stuff going on that you know instead of uh, prosaically uh, 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 pontificating upon it, I um, <laughs> I had to alliterate that. Right, I like that. Yeah, <laughs> I had to, that's, that's that was with the pause. I was looking for another was, p word. That was quasi um, stairway to heaven right there. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, uh, so uh, so I just wanted to toss all those out there because there's so much complexity going on in a cigar. The, the last third of this cinnamon, oak, leather kind of dominate the last third, picking up a slight mint note on the end of it, mm. which you get sometimes, I think, when a cigar uh, gets towards the end um, on the Nicaraguan tobaccos. It's mm-hmm. just one of those weird flavors that shows up. Uh, but a slight mintiness to it. Uh, this I, I I put a note. I said this is the boldest Monte Cristo I've had. Complex Nicaraguan uh, Puro Retro Hail was leather and cocoa powder, powder backed by pepper. Um, solid ash, perfect burn. This is not for like people who really enjoy mild to this is not, medium. Not my first cigar. Yeah, this yeah. is not Fisher Price. My first cigar. Pick this up <laughs> if you like something bold. It is, however, not a harsh cigar by any means. So if you like a medium cigar and you want to step up a level. Without, and not get just yeah, a bunch of pepper burn in your face. Mm-hmm, this mm-hmm. is a great cigar for it because it really, really is such a beautiful, complex flavor, even at that kind of boldness, which sometimes is hard to do. I'm guessing it wasn't cheap, though. It was not. It was $16.45. Yep, yep, I had a feeling. This was an expensive cigar. This is super premium. Um, I gave it a five and a half. Really? I gave it a at five and a price. half because, holy cow, it was complex. Like, you just get points for the complexity on that. I've had uh, Nicaraguan Puros that are just fantastic cigars, but I don't know that I've ever had one that was this kind of complex. Well, if a five means you got what you paid for, yeah. So you're bumping it up just a little bit. I would have paid eighteen dollars for this and not thought and about not it. been disappointed. Just scale ten, and I would have yeah one uh, one to <laughs> ten. Five is you get what you pay for. Right. And so the more expensive a cigar is, the tougher to it is five. for it to to you know rank above a five. Oh yeah, but a five's not bad in this case because you're paying sixteen dollars. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. A five would be a, a five would be a great review. I enjoyed review this at so much. I would have given it a six if it was a longer smoke. It was forty minutes. It wasn't a, a very big cigar. If I would if I would have gotten one hour out of it, yeah. I probably would have enjoyed it that much. Nice. More. nice. So yeah, fantastic. I highly recommend you try it. It's a great like special occasion cigar. My special occasion was I get to smoke a cigar today. So. <laughs> that works for me. Yeah, that works for me. Well, I had an interesting one uh, this week as well. I smoked the Perdomo. 20th anniversary sun-grown Corona Grande. Ah. And, you know, the Corona's not a a thick ring-gauge cigar, but the Corona Grande is a little longer Mm -hmm. than your typical Corona. Uh, So this one actually was a good hour plus uh, for the smoke on this one. Uh, It is a nice-looking cigar, deep brown, sun-grown wrapper. The tobacco is all Nicaraguan, so both of us did a Nicaraguan Puro today. Um, Pre-light on this was very interesting. I got green tea and oatmeal. And not oh. oatmeal like a bowl of oatmeal, but like if you ever like open up, open up the, the the thing of oatmeal and just smell like the dry uh-huh. oats. That was what that was what it, it smelled like. Uh, I used a punch and lit it. Nice Nicaraguan pepper blast that was full and rich, but not too overpowering. Sometimes when you light those Nicaraguan puros, that that first pepper blast is almost it, too much it before be lot, it settles yeah. down. Uh, this this was definitely strong, but not too overpowering. And then once it settled down, uh, it moved into leather and earth with a kind of a white pepper core, uh, a bit of tea leaf in the first third. What started out really full-bodied on that first puff kind of settled into a medium to full smoke after the first half inch or so. It began, though, from the very beginning, it had great complexity and balance of flavors to the cigar. Uh, by the time I got into the, the second third, the 20th anniversary had developed a really nice creaminess. Uh, I, there was an oaky flavor as well. Almost, you know, what it reminded me of, you know, when you taste a, a, a bourbon that's just been really nicely um, resting in oak, oak barrels, and mm-hmm. you get that just little oak astringency. You know what I'm mm-hmm. talking about? There was a hint of like that. A dryness. Yes, it, yeah. a hint of that, a very dry sort of oakiness to the cigar. Pepper kind of came and went, staying very interesting. Um, the final third was even more complex. The strength ramped up to almost full bodied, but not harsh at all, kind of like what you were mentioning with yours. Uh, leather and nuts kind of replaced the tea leaf. The cigar just kind of kept morphing and changing as I smoked it, which is my very favorite thing. You know, my all my favorite cigars 
are not sort of one thing all the way through. Not they really change yeah. and, and, and shift as I smoke. And all the way through, to use an Ian phrase, solid ash. Perfect burn. Nice. It's All the way burn. through. Perfect burn or slow burn. Yeah. Uh, what I like most, yeah. I think. It's perfect burn or slow burn? Perfect burn. Yeah. That's, that's, when, that's when it perfect burns burn. evenly. Well, yeah. So. Yeah. It's nice and straight all the way down. Or if it ever gets crooked, it just kind of corrects itself and doesn't uh, doesn't require any sort of tending. Uh, I think what I like most about the 20th anniversary was the complex and changing flavors that I mentioned. I just re I really loved this cigar. And even better, it was reasonably priced. I would have felt really good about the cigar at ten or eleven dollars, but it sells for between seven and eight. Wow! Yeah, so highly recommended and awesome price to quality. I'll go six point five. Nice. Could almost give it a seven. I just I hate I hate to give like seven to eight dollar cigars too high of a rating because I'm afraid somebody from the cigar company <laughs> might listen and, and start cranking up the price a little bit. But no, it was really good. Super thumbs up on it. Very, very good. All right. Speaking of very good, I have a feeling we're going to be tasting some very, very good spirits, and we want to get into that in the next segment. Plus, we are going to, as I mentioned, uh, try this Stone Brewing Company Dayfall Belgian White. Stone, known so much for their IPAs. Uh, now we'll to do a venture into a Belgian nice. White nice. with these guys. So looking forward to that. Smoking and Toasting is your program that's all about craft beer, fine spirits, and hand-rolled cigars. Docs is here. Chris Morris is here. We'll be right back. That's so Welcome back. It is Smoking and Toasting. This program is all about craft beer, fine spirits, and hand-rolled cigars. We have uh, uh, two guests in the studio today, along with my co-host Ian and myself and our producer Adam, uh, Greg Duxakis uh, from Maison Ferrand, and uh, we have uh, the illustrious Chris Morris, uh, mixologist to the stars. How about Hi, that? Is that, is that a good, is that a good that? mixologist to the stars? You like that? Yeah, sure. Yeah, that works. Hi. We were talking about bands earlier we have to yes. come up with like some good band names well chris was mentioning during the break like death metal and i thought uh nicaraguan pepper blast would be a great yeah, death metal nice. band i always name. thought leprechaun fancy pants would be a good band name i, I what would the style be would that... yeah, it doesn't matter <laughs> with a name like that it doesn't make any difference it'd be like a dropkick murphy's cover band <laughs> and leprechaun fancy also pants. i think uh, i think for my sound garden uh tribute band i i have i haven't decided whether it's going to be loud vegetable or noisy greenhouse yet? Uh, I like both of them. I like both of them. Docs didn't like either one. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I'm Docs like, has uh, nothing to say. Uh, what, what, what was the greenhouse one? Noisy greenhouse. That's the one. Yeah. Because what, the vegetable one had, uh, it had yeah. no pop. It had yeah. no pop. Yeah. yeah. Noisy greenhouse. That's the one, baby. <laughs> let's have some beer, Ian. Uh, let's open up this Stone Brewing uh, Belgian White. Uh, we have. We have so many things to taste today, but that was a that was a really good. It has beer a open. very dank. You still get a better sound from opening a bottle like that than you do from a can, I think. Yes, well, a can has well, it has you know they have their specific. I don't know, man. They they, they do they, they both invoke a certain emotion because right. you know I'll hear the, the can open up and and you know look over to my wife. I'm really a beer at nine a.m. You know, so. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, no, it's Why an RTD cocktail. Shut up. Yeah, so. yeah, it's. Uh, <laughs> Five o'clock. No, somewhere. it's not a beer. It's a hard seltzer. Uh, it's a Moscow Mule. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> the, the one thing that I did just notice, and kind of on that point, how many more do I need here? One yeah. more. One more. Oh, uh, sorry. Is that there is there is one thing you do get opening the bottle that you do not get from the can, which is. The very soft clink of the cap. Hitting yes. The oh, and that's part of the sound effect that we away. try to that yes. we try to do. Yeah. yeah. And with you know the can, you get you that. Get with, that the can. with the can, you do get that sort of action of the little top going back into the can which is kind of cool but yeah with this you get to you get the clink of the bottle so, cap, so. I, i'm going to tell you right off the nose there's a dankness to this uh, to a, to a that's not light. not in a bad way at all it's a, mm -hmm. it's well, a nice stone is not known for doing they're, shall we say light and timid not beers subtle yeah no, no they're <laughs> not that's a better way to say it but can't, they're I'll, not I, subtle i hate to i want to but don't interject this when we were walking in the building i always said i love this building it's always the perfect temperature and i also mentioned there's one more thing you know, it's an older building. You can still kind of smell the smoke in the walls, and it's not in an offensive way. It's That's from back of, it's, when it's, you it's could a, smoke in the building years right, ago, right? right, right. Okay, it's so, not, so, not, but, but, but I got the same thing off of this. It's a, it's a certain dank. It's not unpleasant. Right, right. Yeah. 
So, and just to FYI, to uh, to tell you about the building, if you go into the men's restroom in the in the uh, toilet stall, they still have the ashtray mm-hmm. and and stuff sitting here. They haven't upgraded that since like the seventies. Oh, that's amazing. Seems like I was like, where are you going with this, Ian? I, 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 I very I very seldom see it. When I go in there, because that stall is usually occupied, there's a guy at the law firm down the uh, hallway <laughs> that you'll see him at any hour of the day walking towards the men's room with a newspaper folded under his arm. I'm not kidding. Uh, he's he's I mean, known, he needs to get an iPad, apparently. He's known among the people here in the office as the Mad Crapper. So <laughs> that's what... <laughs> we'll, we'll take... Uh, Office life. We'll take bets when we're headed to the uh, men's we, room. Is we it, knew this episode was going to be spicy. Is the mad crap going to be there or not? This doesn't taste anything <laughs> like the way it smells. Well, and it also doesn't taste a lot like what uh, what I've come to expect from a white ale. It's 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 very good, by the mm-hmm. way. I like it. It's but it's got a little more tang and It's almost and, a and honey sweetness to it. Yes. To it. Mm-hmm. Honeycomb. I get that. Yeah. Sure. Like kind of on the end of the palate there. Yeah, Is there's this... a little bit of that taste of white. I can see so, that it qualifies. But... Lots of Belgian-style uh, white ales out there. None are quite like Dayfall. In fact, all preconceived notions about the style. Uh, gently with a quick look to make sure no one's there. Um, uh, chuck them out the window. At, at Stone, we tip our heads to dr- tradition while uh, simultaneously blazing our own way. In that spirit, we choose uh, Bermagat. Bergamot, bergamot, bergamot orange. Yep. That's easy for me to say. Mm-hmm. Uh, for the complex character, and layered them with uh, back notes of citra hops. That's where we're getting that dank yep, from. Yep. Um, the result is uh, insanely refreshing and remarkably unique beer. Uh, this is delicious. It is really refreshing, and I liked it very, very much. And, and uh, some, uh, you do get on the finish, you get that kind of confirmation so that it is a white odd. ale. Yes. But uh, but it's not it's not like that up front. A lot of whites have that. That flavor sort of through and through, mm-hmm. and this to me is more complex and interesting than most uh, white ales. Yeah, I, the, uh, the bergamot makes total sense. Like mm-hmm. it's like giving you that extra bit of like bitterness because like bergamot's like what you get in like Earl Grey tea. Right, ah. right, exactly. And so yeah. like that's definitely could, like a contributing like underlying factor here. Well, uh, I'm for it. Delicious. I'm, yeah, I'm for it. Uh, I feel, I, feel I, I'm, I normally. You know, keep a loaded bag here. I took the dry curso out of the bag today. I loved, but our dry curso in Belgian or any kind of wheat beer. Really? And I, I, I'm, I'm, do we have any of that left? Is there some left? Yeah. Uh, after the break, I think we should go go get the bottle and maybe drop a little drop in there and see how it goes. <laughs> and there's another bottle apparently from. Hey, uh, look at that! Uh, <laughs> why wait for the break, boys? <laughs> All right, let's do it, Ian. Let's do a report here. Yeah. Reload, and, but, but not much. I, I mean, I don't know, just, yeah, I don't know how just, much just we have touch, left in the touch. bottle. So. But but we should we should how, try that. Tell me how much you're thinking of the dry curacao. Uh, no no no. no. I mean I mean just touch a dry curacao. Yeah. Oh, well, don't okay. do too much of the beer because there's not that yeah, much left right. in the bottle. And I spill it. And some of it's now on the tabletop. Yeah, so yeah, we're out of control. control. All right. And do you have one as well? All right. Now uh, we're gonna need an eyedropper here. You being the mixologist, you'll have to uh, go for the requisite. Do you want a cup to pour it in and then pour it out? Nope. Notice how uh, Ian's pour is about three times the size of any of the rest of ours. Genetics. <laughs> All right, that's working. It's gonna need a little more. All right, so you're gonna need a little more. You think? I think you need a little more. Just a touch. Yeah, just a touch. A, sk- a skosh, as so, the French would a say. Skosh. <laughs> so, wh- uh, what gave you the idea to uh, to put curacao in in uh, a white beer? Uh, well, no, honestly, but the, but it's the orange slice. I mean, okay. how often do we put an orange slice in there? Right, you know? right. And, and and other, you know, I've been putting orange liqueurs in in wheat beers for years, but just it it, it, it over oranges. But like this yeah. one, and again, sorry, going going. Waving the company flag, it's just oh, wow. it's not all about orange. It's about bringing out other flavors, you know. That, well, that's you very can orange. Definitely now. pull the orange uh, from the nose now. Mm. It's much more prominent. Mm. Doc literally has a, uh, a hashtag called "just a bar spoon" because mm. he's a, he's of the firm opinion that just a bar spoon of pure fr- uh, Ferrand dry curacao makes everything better. So I had to make sure I had not only curacao, but I do have a bar spoon in case we need to get there later. <laughs> so okay, uh, so this makes it, it gives it a little, almost like an orange sherbet kind of. It really does, yeah. Uh, flavor to it. There, There's it, a in creaminess fact, that kind of happens there. It reminds me, Buffalo Bayou has uh, a beer that's like Dreamsicle. orange creamsicle or dreamsicle, yeah. and it reminds me yeah, of that yeah, beer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
This has a little mm. spicy bite to the end that I didn't notice before now. And you lose that. You it's lose that track. Spicy bite to the end. Spicy bite at the end. <laughs> <laughs> that's the final. That's the surprise the track. The final on the track. Album. Yeah, <laughs> the, right track. Uh, the hidden the track. The bonus track. Yeah. Um, it it also almost completely negates that the flavor of it being a white. Don't you think? You know that that sort of dry um, flavor that white beers have. It does. It does an interesting thing with the with the dankness at the end of it. It, it makes it really sweet. Mm-hmm. It does. It's very interesting. Wow. Well, I think we, uh, I think we may be stopping off for some, uh, <laughs> some stone after the show. That that's really now good. we're buying beers and liquors, mm -hmm. <laughs> smoking and toasting, directly, directly influencing sales. Yeah, yeah. So, all right, guys. Um, since we have so much to uh, to sample today, let's move right yeah. into whatever is next. Can we can we can we show our friends at home the bottle of uh, Stiggins? So just just for reference. Oh, point? absolutely. This is. This is um, a, a rum that, if we ever are without it at my house, it constitutes a, uh, a an <laughs> emergency a, of sorts. There's an issue. Yes, there's an issue. So I always try to have, uh, always try to have some extra of that. Uh, it is now a lot of people might think that this is going to wind up being really, really sweet because first of all, it's a rum, and secondly, uh, it's uh, it's pineapple. But it is not a flavored rum. So to speak, it's not, you know, when you try a flavored vodka and you can tell that it's vodka and it's flavor. Right. This is not like that at all. This is uh, what's the process? How, how, how do you do the pineapple infusion? Because you use you use staves, right? Uh, well, no, we're using the whole barrel. Using but, the whole barrel. So, okay. so we take our three star rum uh, mm -hmm. and we take the skin of the pineapple. It's Victorian pineapples. They're small, intensely juicy, flavored pineapples. We take the skin of the pineapple and let that sit inside the three star rum. We're going to take that rum after it's been sitting for a while and put it back in the cognac still, still at once. So it's actually distilled with the pineapple skin. Okay. We take the meat of the pineapple, we put that into our original dark rum, let that sit. And then we're going to blend the two together, put it back into the cognac barrel, and let it age for at least six more months. Wow. Um, the end result is, I like to say, it is a rum made with pineapples that still tastes like rum. It still tastes you like know, rum. That's it, absolutely yeah, right. Yeah. 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 So you're going to get the rum first, and the pineapples there just waving from the back saying hello. Yeah, and it, it just makes it more interesting and complex. It doesn't flavor it, so to speak. No, know? well, no, I, it, it definitely flavors it. It gives it flavor, but we just don't want to call it a flavored spirit because it's not as simple as adding flavor to it. There's a right. process to it that, 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 quite frankly, took us a long time to perfect. Well, it's darn good. You, you done well. <laughs> you done good. Yeah. So, so what have you poured us here? Absolutely. Oh, we yeah, didn't even pass it out. Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, we know. Well, right, we, we, we need anyone for for. Can we use the plastic one for Adam? Is that right? Yes. Is that a party foul? It's it's. it's, it's not, yeah, it's he, not, he doesn't have to drink fancy. We just have to keep him drunk. It's not that so we don't value Adam. It's raise. just Chris didn't bring all the glassware that I begged him to bring. Yeah. Well, that happens. Sorry. It's the worst. Yeah. Okay, there we go. All right, so we'll pass so that over I've to Adam. So I've actually only tasted a little bit of this, so I'm, I'm kind of going in blind also for the first time. Mm -hmm. uh, um, but what this is, it's uh, Teeling, um, which is Teeling a, whiskey, yeah. yeah is that right there? It's a yeah. wonderful Irish whiskey. Here, I, can, uh, 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 I can put this directly up in the camera. They are one of our uh, our, our barrel uh, exchange partners that, uh, um, that, that Alexander uh, uh, has made friendships with and has exchanged barrels, and they're using some of our cognac or rum barrels for their spirits, and we're using their spirit or their barrel to finish uh, uh, our uh, our rums. Now I see the pineapple on the label. Yeah. Did they use uh, the barrels from the Stig and yes, Fancy Pineapple? Yes. This, That's this so awesome. Is, uh, th th this exchange. So this this is why the reason why I brought up the pineapple is because this is the tealing. Uh, it's been finished inside. Actually, I don't know if it's finished or honestly, I don't know if it's finished the entire time in the barrels, but they're using our barrels, our, our pineapple rum barrels, to age this spirit. Well, I can see the uh, the pineapple and I can see the uh, the plantation logo uh -huh. on the rum. And, uh, boy, it's great on the nose, I can tell you It that. really is. I mean, again, this is going to be my first time to really dive into it. I got a little taste a while back, but it I has didn't... It has a little rummy kind of... Uh, Nose to it. You know, it'll, you'll get a little of that on the finish too. Is it me? Is it bringing out the corn in there? I think. I think probably not in a so. bad way. No, not in a bad way at all. Mm. It's it's very complex. Oh my, Ian. It's a very uh, like I see where you're going with the corn. It's kind of a dry flavor with the corn there, but there's so much sweetness that happens. 
Especially in the aftertaste. Wow, the sweetness just keeps going. I really, I don't get any pineapple at all on the palate. I don't. I think but see, just, I get just... I get a little rum, but not pineapple necessarily. <coughs> but then again, you know, the pineapple in the plantation uh, pineapple, it, it's not this heavy, pronounced thing. It's more like like you were saying, it kind of waves from the back. Yeah. yeah, and it's it's so subtle. Retro and it's hail has a very <coughs> fruity note to it, but I couldn't pin it as pineapple at all. Yeah, I mean, it's almost like you're getting more like the pineapple like skin component, mm -hmm. like that little like kind of like faint whisper in the back. Great song name, uh, <laughs> skin component. Amber band called it. <laughs> <laughs> Faint whisper in the back. Wasn't that a George Michael song? No, I, I, I'm sorry. That was that was something that was else. In the bathroom. Yeah. What? Uh, but uh, but this the is <laughs> this is quite delicious. I, I would uh, I, I would enjoy this. Well, I'll enjoy it while you can, guys, because it is gone. It is done. In fact, it was never even available in the United States. Really? I, I had to go through a website that I was pretty sure they're going to hack all my credit cards after I used it. <laughs> but but it, it, it showed up. Too sweet. It, it, it arrived. You know, I, I feel bad because I actually ordered another teeling that used, um, I don't want to say our regular barrels, that used uh, some of our plantation barrels that was not the pineapple. That one is stuck somewhere in a post office in New Jersey. We're working on it. <laughs> okay. So, but, um, so I'm just out of curiosity, as good as this is, why didn't they make a whole bunch of it and send it out everywhere? I mean, why keep it that limited if it didn't even show up in the States? Because we don't have that many barrels to give them. Ah, okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Well, That's I mean, a good I, answer. And, and, and to, to flip the script, I mean, uh, there's though I don't have one with me today, um, you know, we come out with a, a, like, the last one I can think of was our Jamaican rum that we did for the Houston Bourbon Society. What is the name of the guy that runs that? It doesn't uh, matter. Alan That's, Denny. It, uh, that's it, Alan Denny. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, but we only had, like, uh, I don't know, maybe three three casks worth and it was yeah. delicious wonderful well, I want to do it again we ain't yeah. got that barrel no you don't more. Have the barrels. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that makes sense but it, it is one of those things that it's it's just extremely uh, you feel extremely um fortunate to be able to sample something like that yeah. that's uh, going to be uh, as a, and that is one of the things to to you know toot the uh, Houston Bourbon Society and the uh, and the Whiskey Socials uh, horn a little bit there's always some things like that there some things that you'll sample there mm -hmm. that you're not going to necessarily find uh, elsewhere, and it's just uh, you know kind of gives you that aren't I cool kind of a kind of a feeling. I the police, as it were. <laughs> so uh, so well well this is great. I'm I'm uh, I'm very impressed by this, and I'll tell you um, I don't know how much more we have to sample, but let's do this. Let's take a break, and we'll come back. We'll do some more uh, sampling. We'll sample another spirit in the next segment. Uh, I didn't look. I didn't peek in your uh, bag there, Doc. So I don't know how much stuff you brought, but I know Chris has got a full bag too. We'll have plenty to taste. So. We'll figure it out. So we'll uh, we'll do some more coming back next. I like this. Sorry that you can't find any because it's good. <laughs> Smoking a toast, and we'll be right back. Welcome back. It's smoking and toasting. We are the program that's all about craft beer, fine spirits, and hand rolled cigars. We are brought to you by mycigarshirts.com. Uh, new designs at uh, mycigarshirts.com, including the one that uh, that I really like. I've got to order one of these. It says uh, it says vaccinated, caffeinated, and ready to smoke. I'm uh, I'm I'm down with that. That's the that's kind of the free. It's it has felt so good to go back into a bar again. You know. That's something that's been yeah, missing yeah. from our lives for the last, you know, what, year and a half almost? How long has it been? So when did it, it close down? At least a year ago, maybe a little more. Yeah, and even the, the bars you could go into, you couldn't so go be to the second or bar. third week of March. March. Yeah. Yeah. Bar, you know. yeah, absolutely. So, <laughs> I uh, would know. I lost my job then. Yeah, ex exactly. So it's uh, it's got to be uh, – I know, I know that, like, since, you know, some of the restrictions have been lifted from the pandemic – that like people are buying airline tickets like crazy. People are booking, you know, hotels and Airbnbs like crazy. Is it coming back to the bar uh, industry too, Chris? Oh yeah, absolutely. People are flocking back to the bars. I, I I've only been out a couple of times and it's been pretty busy everywhere yeah. I've been. So, uh, but yeah, no, we 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 did like us in particular. Like we're doing better numbers than we ever did pre-COVID. You know, I'll go out, you know, I, our spots in Montrose. So I'll go out, you know, for a shift drink at Poison Girl and like. 
Yeah, it just feels like boys and girls. People are at like, the bar. People are talking. Yeah. People are like, "I'm so tired of drinking alone." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, there was actually a couple of times Ian and I would get together on Skype and just drink, you know, on Skype. It was it was one of those kind of things, you know. It was companionable. But <laughs> uh, but I will say I don't make nearly as good a cocktails as when you can go out to a bar and have Chris or somebody make them for you. Well, I'm so. gonna tell you. Uh, so me and my wife have gone out to uh, Chris's bar a few times, mm-hmm. and. Uh, and I know that bartenders hate it when people do this, but I'm like, just make me some. He knows me though, so I yeah. think that's different. Yeah. Do bartenders really hate that? I don't hate that. I, mean, I don't hate it at all. Yeah. Like, it, yeah. I mean, it, it kind of depends, right? Like, if I know it's someone like Ian that like loves spirits oh. and is there and like just literally does not care, make me something cool, like whatever's on your mind. Awesome. I don't have yeah. to think. It's great. Right. Right. It makes me a drink. Wait, I don't like vodka. Yeah, like or that, gin. That, that's or the whiskey. part. Or that's whiskey. the part where it always, always gets awkward. Is people are like, "Oh, just make me something," and you start like doing some discovery, and it's like, "Oh, you just don't like nice. anything." So, but, but what yeah. drink do, does it like really frustrate you when people order? What's what's the what's your least favorite drink for a person to order? Water. Oh uh, no! Uh, <laughs> spoken like a true mixologist. Yes. Uh, now I saw the bottle of tequila ocho come out. And I know this is probably going to be different from what I've had, but that's a very good tequila. It's a wonderful tequila. We've had that show on the show before, and it has uh, it has done very well. Did well in our uh, tequila blind yeah, taste yeah, test uh, with Liliana, as I recall. So, uh, all right, what are we what are we trying next here, sir? So, as you mentioned, this is tequila ojo. This is the the baby of uh, of uh, um, uh, Thomas Estes and uh, uh, um, what's Camarana's first name? Um, I'm blanking. Carlos. Right Carlos Camarana. Thank you, uh, Carlos Camarana. Um, and uh, you know, unfortunately, we, we, we lost Thomas Thomas this 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 past year. A gentle soul, sweet man, uh, and and a really fine spirit maker. And unfortunately, he died this past year. But he was very close to Alexander. Uh, they had a tremendous amount of respect for each other, and so he was one of our favorite barrel swap partners. So I have brought today. Um, uh, a tequila ocho, two of them actually. One that's the continental aged, and that is our cognac barrels they used. Nice. And this is the tropical aged, that is the plantation rum barrels they used. Now there's a third one I did not have, and that's called uh, 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 Transatlantic, I think. And mm-hmm. that's both. It's going to be ca- cognac both and. Cognac. Right, right, right. One of the things about tequila. Um, tequila will be aged in all, you know, different brands, different expressions, in all kinds of different barrels, uh, especially if it's an añejo or an, an older tequila. Uh, older tequila, but it seems like, for whatever reason, at least in my experience, it's less likely to be a part of what they advertise as a selling point of the tequila. In other words, if if you buy a if you buy a whiskey and it has been aged in a certain kind of barrel, uh, a, a, a bourbon or whatever, it, a lot of times will tell you that in rather bold letters on what barrel the bottle. Yeah, it, it seems like it's part of the, uh, you know, same thing with craft beer. If it's like a, a stout or a porter that's been aged in a particular kind of barrel, uh, they'll, they'll tell you about it kind of in all caps. Um, with tequila... Almost all of the, especially the older expressions, I think, have have rested in something, but it just seems like it's not as big a part. You can find it on well, the bottle. That's because ninety nine point nine percent of the time, it's going to be a bourbon barrel, or okay. most likely a Jack Daniels barrel. So, so. what you're uh, kind of going to pour for us if here? If it's really cheap, it could be a rain barrel. <laughs> <laughs> that's a joke. Uh, but but what you're going to pour for us here then is a bit of a step away. I know some of my favorite uh, uh, tequilas have been in like sherry. Cask yeah. and other things, but what you're gonna what you're gonna pour for us here is a bit of a step away. Well, from th- the norm, I, I right? I thought just for fun we would start with the plantation guy. Oh, Barry in the lead, oh, aged dude. in ocho barrels. Dude, that is just so oh. wonderful. Well, but but, but similar nice. to our good friend over there, the teeling with the pineapple yeah. aging. Yeah. This one you cannot get. I think you can still get it in Chicago. We never I, got it in Texas. I, I noticed you were getting cluttered over here, so I put yeah. this over here in case you uh, might forget about it. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, surprisingly. Ian put it behind something so it wouldn't be <laughs> visible. So, uh, well, so no, this, this one, is. So, this one, like all. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say this is one that not only can we not get here, but we never could get it here, correct? That's correct. All right. So, um, so this one, and let's do one for uh, for Adam over there. <laughs> we're. <laughs> we're and one for my homies. <laughs> <laughs> I already did that. I took care of that. Hmm. Okay. 
This is for hydration. Oh, is second only Man. to production. That's now, what the Bible dude, says, right? This is, uh, I believe now, that's uh, Genesis you. three three. Uh. So, like all of our single casts, it's going to spend time in the bourbon barrels in Guyana. Uh, this one is from the Port Morant. No, that's the the still <laughs> Port Morant pot still. It's from Demerara Distillers. Demerara Distillers Limited. Uh, I mean this in the very best way. Oh, the funk. Yep. No, it's, yeah. it's beautiful. So uh, it's going to spend that time. Let's see here. It's going to be 17 years in the bourbon cask, two years in a frying cask, and the extra six months in the Kilo Ocho mm. cask. Now, I have, as you kiss. can see, I've tasted this one, and you get rum, 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 and just right at the end, you get that certain reposado tequila. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Uh, that, that vegetable quality from a, from rep, from a mm -hmm. particular reposado that tequila. just... Yeah. Tiny bit of agave that comes Ooh. creeping up on you very, very much at the end there. Mm, mm, mm. 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 What a complex and wonderful rum. Yeah. Wow. It's beautiful stuff. Yeah, yeah. You it's guys a, do so it's many of these. got a sneaky kind of heat to it that it I like. It does, doesn't it? It's, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's not evident in the first sip. and then. Nope. And then it pops back up a little bit later. And it's you get that pepperiness that mm -hmm. you will get from tequila that typically you do not get from these rums. Not to that mm -hmm. effect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sure. That's right. You're absolutely right. The pepper is not something you get normally with a rum. Yeah. But no, it works. I, like, it I, works I, really I think well. these flavors complement each other super well. Like one of my favorite cocktails on our current menu is a split between uh, a, a Blanco tequila and a Mexican rum. Because like the flavors just play so well, so well together with like the different types of like funk and pepper. Well, the, you're talking about actually my two favorite spirits, tequila and rum, and so the whole idea of a cocktail that works with both yeah. of them, yeah, that sounds good. You get that's on the menu. It is. Oh, I'll be there. Shall we try some tequila? Let's do it. So this is the reverse. Now, I'm not saying this is the exact same barrels that we exchanged, the barrels of this one and this one, but these are tequila ocho barrels. This is going to be our, uh, our our plantation rum barrels, though I could not tell you which one, though. Okay. okay. So well, you said one was pineapple. No. No? No. Just uh, not to my I doubt it very much. Okay. No, I'm just, sorry. Uh, just regular uh, uh, pineapple rum. Just, no, damn it. See? Cruise. <laughs> I, I could have sworn you said pineapple the no, first time. No, no, no. Okay. All right. No well, that's all right. Pineapple. I love that sound. Mm. It's beautiful. I, I need to hold up to the mic. I was uh, thinking while you pour there, I was just saying I had some of your, um, um, what is it, the, the, the 20? No, 20th anniversary. 20th anniversary, yes. Uh, I had some of that uh, just this last week. Actually, I polished off the bottle mm -hmm. at home and was just amazed because I'd been enjoying the Isle of Fiji and some of the other things. I was just amazed at how much more cinnamony that was than your other rums. The cinnamon was almost like the the dominant note that I kept getting from. Really delicious, but so different. That's, that's the great thing about plantation rums is that you can try... The different expressions they're, they're there not so they're not similar flavors. like they're all rum but they're all very different from each no, other we strive very much <laughs> so to make each plantation different from the last one mm. a couple I quick uh message things Ugh. we got a greetings from gulfport and uh, apparently uh we can't call this a job because it doesn't look like we're working yeah well, i'm sorry to interrupt <laughs> i'm working on a bottle of tequila <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right. oh, but, I'm jing, but you know um uh, well yeah we are back on the the tequila train here because i can uh yeah just wonderfully get the tequila nose Chew. on this Chew. yeah yeah when when you do it, talking straight spirits chris what what's your preference are you a whiskey guy or are you a, a tequila guy rum guy what what sort of Peppery. tops the list for you i mean <laughs> I tend to avoid um, any French spirit. <laughs> well, uh, well, I know. Ob obviously, I know you're a cocktail guy, and you're yeah. used to the, you know, the blending and the crafting. But, but if you're going with, you know, just a straight, you know, snifter of something, what's it likely to be? Uh, so it, it just largely depends. Like, I, I drink across the spectrum. I drink anything that I think is quality. I drink, uh, I drink a lot of rum. I drink a lot of single malt whiskey. Uh, whether that being like. You know, Scottish or Irish or even like American single malt. Like that, I just love barley. That's kind mm -hmm. of my my profile. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, a lot of like simple highball, a lot of gin and tonic around the house. Mm -hmm. You know, nice. it's like the old adage: if you do it for a living, you tend not to do it at home. So yeah, like, you're not at home like making yeah, yeah, you know like I, really like complex, I do eight, eight ingredient crazy gin cocktails, cocktails all day yeah. at home. Gin and tonic. Yeah. <laughs> I, I hear you. This is absolutely delightful. I, I, I was, and then that was my first time trying it. I'm going in blind on this. It is like silk sheets for your tongue. Yes, it is. It's just it's, so. It's silky. It almost couldn't be 
<laughs> smoother. There's virtually no tequila hug here at all. But the, but the, but and that's st- dangerous. Still plenty of mouthfeel and flavor. There's though. a yeah. nice peppery to it, a peppery yeah, sure. spice to mm-hmm. it, though, that kind of, I think, takes place of the tequila hug. It's really nice. Yeah. This is good news. This is good news. You can still get this at Rice. I know, I've seen for a fact that Rice Liquors in Bel Air. Rice yeah. Liquors yeah. in Bel Air awesome. in Houston yeah. has got this. And, and let me let us see the bottle to show the bottle to the camera. This is the, this is the tequila the Ocho one. Tropical. Yeah. Yeah, and that's even like a slightly higher proof than like you're usually getting your tequilas. I think it was what like forty five eight. <laughs> He's right. So oh, when it comes to tequila, I really yeah. don't need a higher proof because I'm going <laughs> to consume a lot of it. But uh, but it, it works. It absolutely works. Well, uh, fantastic. No, no, no. Um, limes or salt were harmed. In the no, filming uh, of this nor sh- nor should they be. Oh. This is just absolutely wonderful. Now, did you have another tequila you wanted to try? Should we do that in this segment or wait? Uh, you know what? I, I do have another one to try, but I feel like I'm making this the Doc's show, which people want, but I just I want to be cool about this. So if we got something, we need him to shake up, and by all means, let's do it. Well, okay. This was not. I, I full disclosure. When I agreed to do this show, I did not even have pants on. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I'm I'm here for color commentary. I, I, I'm the support I'm the support cast. <laughs> that's good because when I did the show notes, I didn't have pants on. You're, you're the ba- you're, you're the you are the wonderful spirit. I am the finishing cast. Yeah. Well, uh, segment seven will be the pants off dance off. So uh, we'll be we'll be looking forward you, to that. Do you want to jump into this real quick? But let's let's do it. Let's yeah. Do since it. since gonna, we're since we're in I a can't tequila this much sort of way because I still gotta drive home. So I'm gonna yeah. be unthinkable and cool well. So my my wife is the person that books the show and and lines up the guests and and she kind of knew what docs had planned and knew that chris was going to be here and the last thing she said to me this morning when she left for work was make sure you get something to eat after the show (laughs) (laughs) Uh, she's a wise woman She's I'm not sure if that's an endorsement or an indictment. Yeah. All right. I, don't know. I was expecting more of a confirmation. <laughs> As you walk out, you're good enough, you're smart enough, you're better than them, Chris. <laughs> also, eat some food after the show. And eat some food after the show. <laughs> Actually, that's what she says when we have Chris Harder, Alan Denning on, is that uh, confirmation. So, uh, you know, that's... I, no, that I know Alan Denning. Who was that first guy? This yeah. smells distinctly different. Well, um, <laughs> excuse me. Again, I'm going blind on this guy, guys. I don't even know if wow. this, this is a this one's an anejo. So this is also is that tequila. One? I don't even know. Is that one reposado or anejo? Anejo. Yeah. So they're both anejos, but this one's going to be finished inside our. our actually, I mean, probably aged the entire time in our. <laughs> sorry, I read a label. The <laughs> label says yeah. aged one year. I don't know if that's its entire life. Okay. I don't know if it's that one year in 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 the uh, uh, um, cognac barrels, but it is our cognac barrels. Well, it can't. And for those it can't at home be that are going, this guy doesn't even know his own stuff. It's not our staff. It's just well, our real partners. It can't be its entire life because if it's aged for one year uh, to be an añejo, it has to be more than a year. So no, one year. No. For an yellow, I thought an yellow had to be like three years. No, one year. Mm-mm. It's, okay. so it's, it's, it's uh, one to three. One to three. One, yeah. one to three. So okay. reposado is six reposado's, months. Yeah. 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 All right. I knew that. So all right. Mm. Reposado, Anejo. As good as that last one was, this one's better. Just getting into it, let's see. Get that same pepperiness um, on the nose. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it has, but it has a distinctly different kind of nose to it, it does. as well. It has that same pepper, but it has like other stuff going on that's different. This, this is a little more fruit kind of popping. Yes, through. there is definitely a fruitier vibe to it. Yes. I got a cocoa note on the first one. I'm getting that fruit note on this one, which is weird because you would think that you would get a cocoa note from the cognac cask and yes. you could get the fruit note from the rum cask. But that this, this is, uh, it's definitely got a little fruitiness to it. I'm though. almost getting a coconut kind of thing. Like it's got kind of a weird tropical Pina oh, colada oh, yeah, sort of yeah, vibe, yeah, like, yeah. like some like toasted coconut. Yes, yeah, definitely. Like or marshmallowy almost. Like it, maybe I'm getting a little weird there. It but. is a little tropical though. You're right. You're right. Wow. Well, I'm impressed. I'm uh, impressed. Delicious. And I'm is it. this available? Yes. Okay. Well, okay. I, two weeks ago it was. <laughs> two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone hasn't bought all uh, yet. Well. I, saw, I saw. I saw definitely at uh, Rice and Bel Air. Ooh, there's one in Garden Oaks that I saw, and I cannot mm, up liquor, up liquor. Okay. And uh, and yeah. what's a bottle of one of these two going to cost? Let's check the old sticker. I think they're still on there. I think eighty bucks. Oh yes, yeah, seventy dollars ninety nine cents for all this. Right, there you go. Worth right. every sip. Worth every. Would you give it a five? Sip, yeah. What's that? Would you give it a five on the uh, end scale? Oh, I would. This is fantastic. Yeah, I'd, I'd go. Worth I might 80 bucks. Go, I'd say worth it. Might, might even go a little higher. It's good. It's very good. All right, we're going to take a break. 
Uh, we will come back. We have more beer to taste, believe it or not. And uh, we will also be uh, be checking in with uh, some of the new cigars that are out. Well, there's a, one particular new cigar that's coming that I wanted to let you know about from one of our favorite cigar companies. And uh, we also have more uh, spirit tasting to do. Uh, I have a feeling that what's going to happen is Docs is going to pull something else out of his bag and then Chris will just reach back into his bag and, and pull something else out. Too, Bruce so says, don't feel bad. Most of the time when he's watching the show, he's not wearing pants either. That's good to know. All right, we'll be back at Smoking and Toasting, show number 240. Welcome back. It is Smoking and Toasting, show number 240. We are brought to you by MyCigarShirts.com. It's cigar shirts. Uh, well, it's shirts of with snarky cigar sayings. And whoa, whoa, we there had we our go. first spillage. All right, good. The officer is never going to believe me that I haven't been drinking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think that was the towels. headphones cable, so yeah, I, I don't yeah, think yeah. he can be entirely blamed for well, that. Um, we, l- this show is not about um, you know applying blame. This show is about did you bring enough to make another one? It was awful. All of a sudden, he started throwing things and knocking things over. He was all an animal, I tell you. (laughs) Usually, that doesn't happen until the final segment after we've been drinking for a while. So, uh, so here you know, we do the show live. You know, we don't edit this stuff out. So there you go. Uh, You want to go beer first, then? uh, Let's go beer first while I tell you about cigars to watch for. Uh, One of our favorite cigar companies, Room One Hundred and One. Uh, is celebrating a little more than a decade in business, and they'll be releasing their 12th anniversary cigar show, or cigar rather, at the PCA Trade Show next month, along with big additions to the Big Payback brand. The Room 101 12th anniversary is a 6-inch by 52 ring gauge Toro, and uh, brand owner Matt Booth, who is very fond of Ian, um, has turned to A.J. Fernandez and his factory in Nicaragua uh, for production. It's the same factory where they did the 10th anniversary uh, cigar. The 11th anniversary factory was kept secret. But 10th anniversary, they went uh, they went all in with AJ. According to Booth, this will be the strongest anniversary cigar smoked to date and has suggested a retail price of $11 each. It'll be limited to a run of 1,001 boxes of 20 cigars apiece, and it's expected to start shipping by the end of the summer. Now, I bring this up for a couple of reasons. Number one, <clears throat> Room 101 does great cigars. Number two, uh, Ian, I, I just know how fond you are of Mr. Booth. Um, uh, that guy is entertaining. Yes, he is. And uh, so we interviewed him, in, interestingly enough, uh, at the last uh, Whiskey Social. So uh, it was uh, it was a lot of fun. We got to sit with him and, uh, and uh, our buddy uh, Alan Denny, who uh, runs the Whiskey Social, uh, set the whole thing up for us. So. It was uh, it was quite nice. Um, so anyway, look for that in your favorite cigar store because it won't be with a thousand and one boxes. It won't be around for long. It's the Room 101 12th anniversary cigar. All right. So Chris has been busy uh, mixing something up for us. I saw that you used this bottle of Citadel, no mistake, Old Tom Gin. What can you tell me about that? Uh, so Old Tom Gin is one of like the original styles of gin. Usually there's about, you know, a little bit of extra sweetness, usually like a more of like a malty base. Mm-hmm. So it lends itself more to like really, really like great stirred cocktails. This, uh, I'm sure Doc's going to elaborate a little bit more. This is a bottle from 2016. Okay. Um, and they, they've later done some like more stuff with it. But for whatever reason, I was ordering liquor one day and I was like, oh, this is shows available. Let's see if it shows up. And it did. And it did. Wow. Uh-huh. And it's, it's a really, really phenomenal like barrel rested gin. Mm-hmm. Um, I know Ian's a big fan of that. So, mm-hmm. Well, we will uh, get to that in a moment. We're going to start, however, with the IPA that is uh, our, our uh, St. Errant Brewing Company Terror Dome Saint IPA. St. Errant Brewing. you uh, got, you got to show that can to the brewing camera, though. Brewing can because... at Temperance Beer Company. So, oh, yeah. 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 That, I just love the... Uh, the flying saucer there with the uh, dog and cat in it the that just that that made it for Driving me I was like, it, yes. i'm down yeah i'm down plus a double dry hop it's got a little war of the world's kind of feel yes, to it, does. it doesn't it it does it is yeah. <laughs> listen if the dogs and cats come in flying saucers to take over the planet i'll let them they can have it uh, you know, it's cool. i'm pretty good to my dog i hope that would really oh i wonder what the inside joke is though uh I, i'm not sure 
I'm not sure. There, yeah, there's got to be a reason for it. I just loved the can art, and I thought, let's let's do it. So. How do you feel about this beer? Uh, I've just uh, kind of sampled it on the nose so far. I haven't tasted, um, but I do like double dry hopped IPAs in general. So this mm. this actually smells pretty good. Mm -hmm. Wow, um, I dig it. It's got a little more hop bitter, uh, but that works fine for me. Um, I've noticed that some IP some IPAs have that canned peas smell. You know mm -hmm. when you open up. You know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It does not have that. Correct. I like this IPA quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. It's not too pine coney. Uh, it's you can definitely taste the hops, but it's not too pine coney. You're making a face though. I, I, I have a feeling you don't like it. I, I don't know that I don't like it. I just it's it's a little humdrum to me. Really? Yeah. It's got it's got fruit right up front in the it's palate. It's got a dog and a cat and a flying saucer. The, the packaging the is very cool. <laughs> For God's sake, man! <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but like, yeah, what could I, you possibly want? I mean, I, I'm, under, I'm understanding. The can what is you're not at. cold activated. Yeah. Oh well, there you go. Yeah, like, yes, we've yes. got cats and flying saucers and it, double dry hop IPA. So if, I want a chocolate chip cookie and I kind of have like an oatmeal raisin. Uh, if, and, if like the, it's just if it's just cat, not hitting the mark, right? Are you the, are you feeling the same thing yeah. with me? It's kind of humdrum, if you ask me. It's, but it's not. But listen, there's almost like a slightly like over grainy to it that's like it's a little distracting but guys and let's be real if the cat turns blue the beer is cold and i was gonna say the lasers show up <laughs> yeah, <right>. the <laughs> lasers show up it's cold and it, it's got a sticky uh sticky kind of round fruitiness right up front that, that i don't really like i think and it's just it's not hitting my palate right okay it's not uh, it's not my favorite ipa but i think it's pretty good i'm not trying to convince you i'm just telling you what i think yeah. it's, like, it's not my favorite but it is my least favorite yeah no but no no <laughs> it's it's not that at all i think it's very refreshing it's got a very, i love the mouthfeel and now that i've had a few more sips it it tastes like they poured a little bit of tang in beer mm, mm, mm. i i can't agree with you on that yeah that's that's way it's hit my tongue. That that would that would definitely be not a good thing. I've had beers like that, but I don't get that out of this. I'm sorry, it's saying here. That's, that's, that's just the way I have one. Yeah. Those, well, those classic showdowns. <laughs> generally speaking, I hate when mommy and daddy fight. <laughs> generally speaking, if we're gonna argue, it's gonna be about an IPA. Yeah, right? Uh, yeah, I, this this doesn't taste balanced to me. But let me ask you this: Could you enjoy this beer if it didn't say IPA on the label? No, I would probably think the exact same thing about it. It's just too tangy. It's too yeah, Docs, you didn't weigh in. How is how does this hit your palate? I like it. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, I mean everyone's got different palates. I, I like beer. You guys notice like how whatever this is. No, notice fine. how dismissively he says. No, everyone but, has different palates. <laughs> but, but come everyone on, man. We're trying to get ratings here. Tell me I'm wrong. Call me stupid. Come yeah. on, tell them it's, tell them it's your show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can't work like this. Throw a, get the hell out throw of a chair. I'll, be, I'll be in my trailer. <laughs> throw a <laughs> chair. Flip Mr. Twirly gig. Eat the gig. I, I can't do that to Mr. Yeah, Twirly Mr. Twirly gig. Um, We've already been through one Mr. Twirly gig, so we have to be nice to the second one. Speaking of which, why is yeah. he not doing something? He should be gainfully employed. Here. Uh, I, I don't know. You, you, you may not, not work. Yeah, you may not want to do that again. That's this is going to end bad. I yes, strongly that's recommend end you do that, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So can I just balance this like what, what can possibly go wrong? So Look what we're doing. Oh, jeez. This is what we've devolved to at this point. So, and we have, no, I, okay, and we have so, all these spirits and beers, and we have two great right, guests. So, so we haven't so, even gotten a So backing news. up, this beer, yeah. it's it's a little polarizing. I just I don't like it. It's it's not okay. It's not, yeah. I think I think you're right. The more I drink well, it, I even poured myself a little bit more to to make sure. And uh, the more I drink it, the less I like. Well, I had not tasted this before. I do enjoy it, but uh, in fairness, I've been on a run here of IPAs that you've actually liked. You that have I've brought into you the have. show. Yeah. So so and Ian's not the IPA guy. I'm oh, much more of that. The streak is over. Yeah. <laughs> but the streak is over. It's officially uh, it's officially broken. Um, so well, you did bring in a stone beer that wasn't an IPA. That's that's just weird. And it was damn good. Mm. It was damn good. So you know, I'm I'm not doing all that. Like bad. you can count the beers that they make that aren't IPAs <sighs> like way easier than you can count their IPAs. And dude, and their IPAs are great. Clock is ticking. Bourbon barrel aged imperial I know, with coconut and coffee from Smug City. Oh, Super yeah. looking we forward. Have, to we that. have a lot to look forward to. So, uh, so I've been looking forward to this cocktail, uh, Chris. So you used this no mistake old Tom gin that you said isn't. 
something that's really available out there. Nope. Right? It, it, it's sticking with the theme of the show, absolutely not. Yeah, uh, so this is we, we're, this is almost whiskey neat because so much of what it, we've it, had it's here a retired is, product. Yeah, is retired products. Uh, but yeah, what, it, but what it's did a, you? It's rum and tequila and gin neat now. Uh, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, there I we re, go. We're rebranding like our show halfway like to it. 300. Check like that. You, know, no, you may you may find on the shelf some place at some of the you know craftier liquor stores. Damn it, man! You make a good drink. Yeah. So what did you mix this with? Uh, so this is one of my favorite ways to use Old Tom Gin. Mm. Uh, and we're also going to put Docs to the test. So this is a cocktail called the Martinez, which is a, uh, a slight foreshadowing is the great uncle to the Martini, mm-hmm. which may or may not be in the future of this show. Well, I hope so. We've been working. We've been we've been trying to make this happen for a long time. We, we have. It was supposed to happen a little bit. It was actually supposed to happen two weeks from now. Yeah. And then uh, my vodka expert got a like really great job in Atlanta, so couldn't quite make it. Yeah, I understand. excuses. And then yeah. I didn't have any pants on, and Docs is like, "Hey, do you want to come drink tequila?" <laughs> and and I got to talking with with your next wife thing who, you know, it's three weeks later. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and like I and I got to talking with your wife, who's wonderful, and I'm like, I'm happy to like get somebody to fill in the show. But if we're being real honest. Uh, Two of me in three weeks is a lot for anybody, including my wife. <laughs> and she, like, actually <laughs> likes me. Yeah, well, it's good to know. <laughs> so what he's referring to is a show we've been talking about since, you know, uh, I don't know, back on maybe yeah, show since number like 80, 80 or 90. Or yeah. 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 Uh, and that's doing the Great Martini Challenge, where we get someone who makes a great gin martini and someone who makes a great vodka martini, and we really test, taste them and test them side by side and see with the best of each – what they have to offer, um, you know how they how we come down. Ian, of course, surprise, surprise, we don't agree on this. Ian's a gin martini guy. I happen to be a vodka martini guy. I like gin martinis, but I prefer well, vodka martinis. What is the difference when you make a when you make a martini with gin? You have what's called a martini. <laughs> When you make a martini with vodka, you have what's called a big ass shot of vodka. That's not that's But you say that like so. It's a so bad the thing. so the vodka martini actually has a proper name. Vodka Martini. No. If you go back, I believe it was published in Playboy in the 50s. Uh, it's called a kangaroo. <laughs> so, yes. A, 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 in, in my slightly I'm more... Sorry, I couldn't stifle that. In, in, my, in my slightly more asshole-ish days, I would refuse to make you a vodka martini until you, until you literally did the, the research. You need to be like, I would like a dirty kangaroo. And I'm like, yeah, you would, asshole. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I'm a little bit nicer these Sounds days. Like I love Australia. this show, <laughs> damn it. Let me ask you this question. <laughs> when you implored them to do the research, did you actually hand over the Playboy magazine? No. <laughs> See, because that would have been great. Like, no, it, and it, it would have. Think, like, think of this. You're sitting at the bar. Chris has never handed over porn in his life. <laughs> <laughs> Chris is where uh, porn ends. Ear, ear, earmuffs, mom. Yeah, yeah. So you know, you know uh, that reminds me of, and I don't remember where I got this from. But I, I read this somewhere, but the, the the definition of a true friend is the guy that you know that his job is if you were to pass away suddenly, he goes to your house and hides the porn. Yeah. <laughs> or in these days, clears your cash. D- d- yeah, d- yeah. Delete your, your search history. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, so, completely off topic. Yeah. Uh, that show's happening soon. Yeah. I don't know if you've gotten your well, notes on it yet. But, yes. Well, yeah. But yeah. that's off topic. So we made a Martinez. <laughs> yeah. Back to the Martinez. <laughs> which, is, the, which the first time Ian came in and saw me over this quarantine brought me a really lovely half bottle of gin. Not dissimilar from this. It was an old Tom. It was Asian barrels. He's like, mm-hmm. what would you do with this? Like well, my first for any barrel rest at Old Tom is the Martinez. Like it's basically like the dark version of the Martini. Okay, yeah, I get that. Yeah, so you've got two ounces of the gin, one ounce of sweet vermouth instead of dry, uh, and then usually a little bit of maraschino liqueur and bitters, and that's it. But as I said we're putting Docs to the test, so this is a Martinez with just one bar spoon. Of Pierre Ferrand dry curacao. That's, oh, that's not putting it to the test. That's, 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 making that, that's, it put it, that's putting your theory to, yeah. to the test. Yeah. So, how different would it's, this taste? It's got a meatiness to the mouthfeel that yeah, I like. Absolutely. How different would this taste if you did not do the bar spoon? Uh, I, I, Total garbage. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, French. Uh, garbage. <laughs> garbage. <laughs> but what I'm, what I'm saying is at the current price point to you of free, it might drop. Your price to quality ratio from a ten to a nine point five. Mm. Noted. I I I don't know, but, but <laughs> it's just no. But but it's interesting because you know you talk about the whole bar spoon thing. You know, basically dipped in, and then put into the cocktail, 
and then you wonder, okay, that's such a small amount. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How much of a difference does it actually so, make? So, so it makes a it makes a medium difference, right? Like, there's a lot of cocktails that I'll routinely put like a single bar spoon of like a very rich like sugar syrup in, mm -hmm. and it has nothing to do with the sweetness of the cocktail. It's all about like the body and like just a little bit of mouthfeel and how mm -hmm. it plays with with everything else. And like the Pierre Ferrand Dry Curacao not being like as incredibly like sugary sticky sweet as some other uh brands that might be out there it does it gives you this like just really gentle fruit to the cocktail that rounds out a lot of them very very well so i love this and i love the the detail that he can go into with this let me ask you this question as somebody who knows what you're doing when it comes to these kind of cocktails allegedly are some of the bartenders who make these incredibly complex and 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 difficult to make drinks is is some of it just bullshit um as an seriously as an esteemed guest of the show has said i can neither confirm nor deny that information <laughs> no but but seriously is is some of it just like ego and it wouldn't really matter that much you talk about the fact that when you're home you're more likely to drink a, a gin and tonic uh, I, all right so yes so some of them are absolutely um, full of shit. The, dr the drink in, does not need that ninth ingredient. It's right. probably fine with eight. I think that's in. And like I, I have to reel that industry, in on my. Though. Yeah, like we talk about like when you do competition cocktails, and you get your recipe. The first thing you do is figure out what doesn't need to be there and take it out. So this is exactly what I was asking because okay, so I remember you know a number of years ago the first time I went to there's a bar on um, on uh, Montrose called Anvil. And I loved it because they had all these great stone beers on tap that I had never tried. It was the first time I tried some of these really mm. big stone beers. But they also were really known for their cocktails. And the cocktails were, I'll use the word pretentious. Nah, uh, couldn't disagree more. But, but what I found was... This is was, vintage Anvil. <laughs> yeah, no. But what, they had kismet. What I found was, though... That I would order one of these. One cocktails. of those bartenders cost a podcast to say a sponsor once. Like, let's, <laughs> let's be real clear here. Uh, not this show. Not, not this show. That was a different show. Well, what I found was, though, I would order these cocktails that seemed pretentious the way they were written in the menu, mm -hmm. and they were really good. So uh, this is what I want to say. Okay, so uh, I, I, I and I, I've often heard that criticism before that Anvil and quality uh, uh, um, cocktail programs like it can be pretentious. I want to for the record, there's nothing pretentious about doing something right, and that's what Anvil's about. Anvil is 100% about we're going to make you the absolute best cocktail. Whatever you order, yeah. we're going to make it the right yes. way, or we're going to make the best one. So, and, and I want to double, double down on this because when we talked about is it bullshit, uh, William Soroyan once wrote that embellishment is the most important part of storytelling. So when you see I a love it. Yeah. when you see a bartender that's adding that ninth ingredient that may not be necessary, that's them embellishing. That's it's them part turning of the, story. the story into theirs. Mm -hmm. So I would the only thing that I would ever call like BS is when something is just uh, um, I'm, I'm going to say you're, you're PT Barning. Barnuming it. it, yes, and, and, gotcha. And quick story on that is that like he used to own a uh, a, a fishing uh, uh, a fish cannery, and they had a bunch of pink salmon, and they couldn't sell it. And so the tagline was P.T. Barnum, pink salmon, no, or, no white salmon. They couldn't sell it. it was, P.T. Barnum, white son of sam salmon, guaranteed to never turn pink, and it sold. Wow. That's BS. Wow. Yeah. Right. Right. I get it. Well, my experience well, like, at so Anvil always was, if I would look at a drink on the menu. And it would seem incredibly pretentious, and then I would order it. It would be incredible. Okay, okay. Like, so, you know? so I think using the the word bullshit is a is a little loaded in this yeah. context. Like misguided, I think w could be a very good term. Like I won't get into specifics, but like I've had a, a number of cocktails that say were served in like some sort of creative vessel, mm -hmm. which absolutely part of the experience. Mm -hmm. Like Ian's seen me do some some really cool things. You with gave some me nice one that was like a that was like a, a bowl of pho. It yeah. was amazing. Yeah, <laughs> like like I literally like put cocktails in a, in a bowl, and it's very intentional in the way that we do it. But I've had you know cocktails served in a glass you know about this high, and you have a spoon out here, and like you can't get the aerobatics of your cocktail. Right. It's something that's strictly done for like the Instagram generation and like there's the like lack of thought of some of the things that go into some of the cocktails. The Instagram so, like, generation. I, I love that. Yeah. Like, I, I'm very pro like using creative glassware and creative presentations and like really experimental flavors, but I like it very much done with a purpose of just like Doc said, making that experience at the end the best that it can be. Well and I think sometimes we choose 
aesthetics over function. Ian and I joke on a fairly regular basis about the reviews that that are obviously so pretentious. They're like, uh, there was a hint of the of uh, lychee nuts that were grown only on the west side <laughs> of the yeah. uh, hill of you know uh, next to the river Ganges. It's like <laughs> it's like really you know like if you've got a palate that that that's that developed, congratulations. But most people don't. Um, but but what I'm hearing you say is that quality is quality. Yes, and that. Uh, what I'm hearing Doc say, which I'm also a firm believer in, is that the story is part of the experience. I, that's absolutely true. And I've always believed that some people are very critical of you know liquor companies or beer companies that get too flowery in their description of uh, how the spirit of the beer was crafted or, or or what the backstory is. I dig it. I think it's part of tell me a story yeah it makes I, it I more love cold activated cans it's part of the story it's pretty amazing yeah <laughs> all right we're gonna cold activate a uh, segment of the show uh, that includes the very popular segment called drinking news and that will be coming up next plus we have uh, more to taste this cocktail is delicious what is this called got a martinez martinez i am uh, i am a fan of martinez I, mine's broken. I like Pedro Martinez. Mine's I like broken. this Martinez. <laughs> Better than uh, this one. I like, there was a girl named Ilsa Martinez that I went to school with. I liked her a lot. Chris? Ah, uh, very nice. We have dinner with her too. Uh, nice to go. Yeah, took Steve from the Welcome back. It is smoking and toasting. I think, I think Docs and Chris were uh, involved in a conversation. I was really hoping they'd say something, you know, really, really juicy there. We'd capture in the segment. But uh, we're talking about we've talked about porn. We've talked about alcohol. We're not, we're not talked about. Yeah. Not How much juicier, juicier than that? Yeah. Yeah, you, you've asked me to put my entire industry on blast. Yeah, live. that's right. That's right. And and you handled it gracefully. I have to say, both of you did. Uh, and I, and I appreciate that. Look. Uh, what we're never really about trying to look down on things. I, I don't like to come at things from a negative standpoint, especially in when we're talking about spirits and beers and cigars. I mean, these are things that I love. So it's like uh, you never want to approach this from a negative point, unless you're Ian and you're trying to cut the wax off of a uh, uh, of a bottle so we can open oh, it up I got and try this. it. Here. Oh, you got it. Okay. Well, I know if there's any man. Alive, who has the necessary knife? I will gnaw through the top of this beer. <laughs> he did. He, he, he flicked the knife open and about All right. jumped in the right, so lap here. B Before you open that, you might want to pick up the ukulele because it's time for drinking news. Drinking news, drinking news. Now it's time for drinking news. A Florida man with one arm said he had a gator for a pet. When asked about his ant absent arm, absent arm. Ooh, I might have a drink. He said, uh, <laughs> I, had to I gotta my take my gator to the vet. <laughs> yeah, drinking news, drinking news. Now it's time for drinking news. Cheers, y'all. <laughs> you think I'd be better at that song? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that song could get any better. I just think I just think it is what it is. Can All right, can I? Why, why does your ukulele have a Fitbit on there? What is that? Oh, this is actually a tuner. So my ukulele. This is kind of a neat little ukulele. Um, it's 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 not a very like good brand. Stag makes kind of cheap crap for instruments. Those bastards. But pretty good whiskey, um, I heard. But yeah. <laughs> this ukulele happens to be an accident from the factory and the fact that they made a pretty decent ukulele. Uh, the fit and finish is a little questionable, but it sounds pretty good. And it has this cool little side sound hole in it. So it's like, yeah. And it's got a sound hole, an F hole. It's like This is like an over-teched ukulele. Yeah, yeah right? And so, yeah. Uh, and, so, and so this little tuner, usually, you know, you stick it on the headstock and you tune. But I don't like the way that looks, so I stuck it here, and it works just fine. Makes the ukulele look very high-tech. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you uh, give me a chord to put me back in the uh, back in the, uh, the drinking swing? Drinking news, drinking news. Now it's time for drinking news. You know, there is another drinking news song out there. Yeah, uh -huh. that's true. But he didn't bring a guitar. I did not. Yeah, well, but Can we you have play a ukulele, sir. 
Oh, not at this point in the day. No. <laughs> not after these. That's cocktails. way too much transposition. <laughs> it's just it's the same thing as a guitar. Could be no, fifth no, it's not. No, it's not. not. Cruises it's not. rhythm. Play the song so we can do drinking news. Come on, man. Oh, I did. Look, I'm drinking. <laughs> all right. Are you all right over there? <laughs> yeah. Probably. This has been a major show number spill show. Also known as the sloppy show. Yeah, it is the sloppy show. <laughs> this is the one, huh? And this isn't even the last segment yet. A Florida man. <laughs> Hold on, stop there. Uh, <laughs> I tried to get you to give me like a a, a a cord in. With how many arms? A Florida man <laughs> was arrested after chasing down a motorcycle and pretending rather poorly to be an officer of the law. He. The man spotted a motorcyclist cruising down Lake Mineola Shores. That's a street in Florida. He approached the intersection of U.S. Highway 27, and the motorist told police that a silver pickup truck cut him off before he could make a right turn. He continued heading south, and the truck started driving aggressively, trying to run him off the road, according to the arrest affidavit. that's what the cops would do? The, uh, that, how do you... The motorcyclist escaped into a left turn lane, and then the driver of the silver pickup truck leaped out and walked towards him. The pickup driver was wearing camouflage shorts and a green shirt. Just like the cops. <laughs> I, the police. Uh, just an just FYI, I went and saw um, Napalm Death a few years ago, and yeah. that's what the guys were wearing on stage. I'm not joking about was that. Was camouflage shorts <laughs> yes. and green shirts? Camouflage short and green shirts. So the, the guy, what was Nicaraguan Pepper Blast wearing <laughs> when it opened? They were the opening act. Yeah, actually, the Melvins were playing with them. Oh, it was well. a good show. <laughs> <laughs> so the guy jumps, jumps out of his pickup truck, camouflage shorts, green shirt, walks up to the motor, motorcycle driver and says. I, the police. <laughs> he a, I, the police. <laughs> he, had a plas- I. he had a plastic sheriff's badge in a black wallet that he whipped out to prove that he really was I, the police. I, our police. He grabbed the biker's arm in an attempt to arrest him. The victim... <laughs> Didn't believe that he was really a cop. I don't know what his first clue What's was. What's not to believe? <laughs> uh, for whatever reason. And he pushed him away and said, don't touch me. That was when the Florida man tore the motorcyclist's license plate off his bike. The victim was able to get it back. Uh, turns out the motorcyclist was about to be deployed for basic training with the United States Army in a few weeks. Uh, so this turned out to be a, a good trial to test his resolve. <laughs> Uh, he called the police to inform them of what had happened because he was afraid it might happen to someone else. Uh, he chose not to prosecute because of the whole going into the Army thing. A witness verified that the truck was trying to run the motorcycle off the road. Uh, then ma- They made a U-turn to make sure the biker was okay, then snapped a picture of the truck's license plate. Police showed up at the home of 65-year-old Roger Jimenez to arrest him. His side of the story was that he saw a motorcycle going 80 miles per hour and driving recklessly that he stopped him to talk about what was going on and told the motorcyclist he was going to call the police and let him know that he was speeding and driving like crazy. Uh, he denied pulling out a badge, but police searched his truck and found a toy badge in the cup holder of the center <laughs> console. The badge was a six-point star sheriff's toy badge, plastic and silver. Very believable. <laughs> you can even see a picture of it that Adams posted for us here. Uh, the witness verified that this was the same man they saw earlier. Amenis was arrested and charged with false personation, burglary with battery, and petite theft. That's brilliant. But the whole reason to communicate and, and share this story is for the quote. I, the, I police. the police. A Florida man with a silver truck and a plastic piece of Badge, piece of badge. <laughs> I I'm, I'm you, working on the spot I here. Totally Come on. I thought you were going somewhere else with that. That, ladies and gentlemen, is your drinking news. Drinking news, drinking news. That was time for drinking news. Well, go, let's stop for a minute. Remember, I, I the police. Remember Mickey Splains, I the jury. <laughs> right, I the jury. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That was a I the police. I the police. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, the thing about drinking news, we often you know share this is that. You know, it's not necessarily always stories about drinking, but it's usually stories that are, you know, more fully enjoyed if you've been drinking. drinking. And that we have uh, here on today's but show. I, I feel that was thoroughly enjoyed. Uh, wait, 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 I'm wait, glad you did. Was this like an impulse thing? I mean, did dude just happen to have like yeah, a toy what? badge there? I mean, was, was, 
<laughs> did he pan this? If he did, yeah. not very well. <laughs> yeah, you, you got to. I gotta feel like feel. I feel like his whole side of the story is pretty BS. Yeah, pretty lame. Yeah. Well. But, hey, 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 hey. Yeah. Him the police. Yeah, and and Florida man. Him the police. Florida man. You know, it, it it's worth mentioning that there is no other state. Like a sixty-five year old guy too. Yeah, there's no other state that being a man from that state has earned you the same meme worthiness as the Florida man. I just hope that I'm not active when I'm 65. That's all yeah. I'm going to say. <laughs> hey, Ian. Where's your day, hon? How come you took so long to get here? Yeah, Doc's pulled me over. I <laughs> plantation. Uh, yeah, I plantation. I uh, rum. I rum. I like it. So Ian is uh, pouring. That's a song, right? And I rum. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> uh, That's like right. a seagull's go. Yeah, I know. Smog City Brew. Brewing, Ian. This is called Clock is Ticking. It's a bourbon barrel aged imperial porter with coconut and coffee. And anything else you can tell us about it? Mm. Bourbon barrel aged imperial porter Ooh. with coconut and coffee. That's what it says. Uh, well, let's it see. smells wonderful. It's got an interesting thing. It's just got, uh, it, it's like a little um, quick stop groceries on the front with a couple guys working on the roof, apparently. So I don't know. I don't know what all's going on on that artwork. It's kind of neat. Yeah, it, it's got that sort of ransom uh, note uh, font. I'm, clerks. I'm assuming that Chris, Chris is, is already it. asking for more. So no, remember oh, the movie? oh no, my my pants are cold. No, it's spilled. Do you remember the, remember the movie? The, the sloppy episode. Two forty. The sloppy episode. Is, is, is it supposed to be like a play on Clerks the movie? Maybe clock? because it does look like because you know, Clerks is that same sort of yeah. Yeah. Uh, font. But it just right? says clock is ticking. That's uh, pretty interesting. Let's see what it says. Smog City Brewing had... Company LLC. It, um, it oh so yeah is ticking is ticking clock. <laughs> it's, it, it's that's what it says on here. So so it's not clock is ticking. It's well, is ticking clock. Okay, so if you look at the front, <laughs> I, ticking clock. <laughs> if, if you look at the front of it. <laughs> Is ticking actually is above it's, the it's word above clock, it. right, right. But I just transposed them so, because it didn't make any sense. Uh, what, so, yeah, it makes perfect non-logical sense, as my wife would say. Is ticking. Uh, is ticking clock is a retro something <laughs> palette. Uh, this... It's a little hard to read that, uh, that, that typeface, isn't it? Yeah, it's real hard to read because it's like light blue on blue. Uh, palate tickling bourbon barrel aged elixir rewarding you. I haven't been drinking at all. Uh, rewarding, and we're I'm practicing that mm -hmm. for like when my wife's like, Have you been drinking? Mm -hmm. Um, there's no, no birth happy birthday, you birthday, <laughs> yeah, my, you birthday. I'm gonna go home and be like, like, You birthday. It's like my favorite <laughs> Simpsons line where Marge says, Homer, have you been drinking? and he's like, No, well, 10 beers. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, let's see, is uh. Uh, a barrel-aged elixir rewarding you with layers of complexity that blissfully linger on. A strong coconut presence up front with layers of coffee and chocolate are followed by a hint of bourbon, delicate oak, and a finish of dark cocoa and coconut creaminess leaves you craving more. Established in 2011, Smog City Brewing Company is a brewer-owned and operated craft brewery in Torrance, California, devoted to producing creatively inspired and exceptionally balanced beer. Well, we've had Smog City beers on the show before and they've been they've been exceptional. It is and ticking clock. I really feel like this is no exception. This is I think absolutely stunning. The toasted good. coconut on this? Yes. And the coffee mm. and the chocolate is so good. Mm. Like this this should go with ice cream. It almost is oh, ice cream. Yeah, it's <laughs> you it's know pretty close. It's, it's, it's a big got mouth such deal. a yeah. I'm yeah. waiting for Chris to say something. I coconut. <laughs> I coconut. <laughs> <this coconut. laughs> uh, the show has devolved to a point that uh, um, only a few shows have reached. We're getting all Isaac Asimov yeah. with it now. Uh, I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm thinking about the hundredth episode. Uh, uh, and when we remember when we went to uh, to Doxney Land. Uh, yes. Yeah, that was that was one of those shows that I think by the time we got to the end of it, it was pretty silly. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I'm super proud. Uh, of that. Yeah, this is, <laughs> this is delicious. This is very co like mm. they said coconut forward. They were not lying about that. Well, it really, sure. you're right. It really is delicious. It's got everything that you would want an imperial porter to have in terms of there complexity. Are, there are a lot of beers that are big like this where you get a uh, an oversized bottle like this and you share it around. I would drink this entire thing. I have no problems with yeah. it. Yeah, I, I would agree with you. And I'll say this 
There's a lot Even of, in the summer, floating on a river, I don't care. There's a lot of um, Imperial Stouts and Porters that kind of go in this general direction, flavor-wise. I feel like this is better than most of them. This is coming in at a paltry uh, 10.6%. Oh, uh, that's all. Okay. That's in, all. A <laughs> in a row? In a row. All at once? Uh, that's pretty good stuff. So, guys, uh, I know we're not done with spirit tasting here, are we? Uh I can dig something up. No, I'm totally kidding. <laughs> um, I've, never, I've never known you to not be prepared. Do we, do we, I don't think, uh, let's not go there yet. Let's, 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 let's save that for last. Okay. Right. Well, sure. we do have one more segment after this. So then we'll jump, in, we'll, we'll jump straight to this. Oh. Oh, then. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Now, is oh. this new? Hi. Excited. Yes. This, is, <laughs> <laughs> this is our Jamaica 2003. Okay. The, the Jamaica 2003 vintage. So wow. this moving forward, all the vintages we will do will have sort of that that uh, pattern of flora and fauna. That's yeah. That's, that's I was about to say, will, will they all have such an obnoxiously beautiful label? Because this yes, is that ridiculous. really is yes. ridiculous. So right now and we, have, we currently life. have the Fiji 2005, which is available at your better spirit stores. Uh, I know that up uh, uh, see up in Cyprus, uh, uh, Bo's place, uh, Ryan's Liquor has the the new Fiji. Uh, I know the Bel Air and Rice and Bel Air has. It, uh, Lee's Liquor, of course, and on navigation and always. Na- uh, um, That's a great store. N- NASA. Don't tell anybody uh, about it. It's awesome. No, it really is nice. It's, it's, it's probably the best uh, selection of Roman whiskey right there in the downtown area. Um, but uh, they have the Fiji 2005, which we've tasted before on the show, I believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's just got the blue, uh, the blue pattern. But again, mm-hmm. the floor and the final oh, is going to be, gonna yeah. be native to that particular country. This is more of a green look to it, but the, uh, a, uh, that well, one's more of a blue. Well, well more, no, that's gonna, there's this blue right there. It's going to be red. Okay. So the, oh, so, on the, yeah, on the yeah, band. Yeah. Got it. So this one is brand spanking new. It is a vintage, so it is not a single cask in the sense that we're not doing a tertiary aging on this. It's just going to okay. be... Uh, um, uh, bourbon casks in Jamaica, specifically at the Claridon, our Claridon facility. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I believe it's 17 years in the... Well, I'm going to double-check that math there. Yeah, 17 years in the... Uh, uh, 16 years in the bourbon barrel, one year in the cognac cask in France. All right. Yeah. You've got me sufficiently uh, uh, interested. It's um, it's downright sexy. You had is. me Ooh. at Jamaica. At Port Heavy, I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, that's the worst. How could you? Yeah. <laughs> What's this say? Oh, there you go. Please continue. <laughs> oh, Christopher. I love the funk already. Mm-hmm. Oh, we love the funk. You got to have that funk. Got to have that funk. Yep. Yeah. We want the funk. So, Clarendon um, is not using a muck pit. Our is long, not using what? I'm sorry? A muck pit. Okay. Uh, our, our, our long pot facility does. So this one does not. Uh, did, we, did we need to get uh, Get Adam a Adam. little bit of this, yes. Oh, I already like it. And this is, of course, all pot still rum. So we're going to retain a lot of that funk that you do get uh, from that long fermentation. On the nose. And this is available, you said? Uh, well, it just landed. I mean, it landed like uh, is it a Is it super weeks. limited, oh. or is it something that should be around yeah, for a while? Yeah, 22 cases for the entire state. Uh-huh. Wow. Man, that is surprising flavor. I, mean, I can le- legitimately say this is one of the most beautiful rum labels I've ever seen. It really like, is the, gorgeous. The artwork yes. is out of this world. Mm. So on the nose, you get that banana skin. This it's is a incredibly really unique rum. Interesting how delicate the flavors are. Yes, on this, I agree. Actually. And and the funk comes on the uh, finish. Mm-hmm. It's not funky up front. It's funky on the finish. In a and wonderful the nose. way. Yeah. And the nose. Yes. Yeah. yeah you get the funk on the nose track. for sure. Funky on the finish. It does have the yeah. funky pen. So, but the, we've the, got the, a whole album. So, worth rum of song funk for, here, for, for anybody listening here, rum, uh, like good rum, does have a lot of times a particular funk, sometimes a rubbery kind of mm-hmm. uh, flavor to it, those kind of things. And all these things are good things, so it sounds interesting. Right. Sometimes even a medicinal mm-hmm. uh, or chemical kind of thing that also is quite good. Well, there's there's two words that we use here on the show pretty frequently. That are both really good things, not really bad things. One is funk, and the other is dank. Yes, we've used yeah. both of them on this show. By yes, the way. we have. Yes, we have. And and this has got that wonderful rubbery funk on the finish, but it's bright and floral up front. And there's even a little bit of that on the finish as well. It just it just really does very interesting things to your palate. The ester count on this one is four hundred and twenty-two. Now I'm getting all 
Yeah, I mean, I, I was about to say, uh, I, I have opinions on things. Okay. That'll surprise no one. Yeah, the, uh, the uh, retro hail is uh, uh, pure uh, banana. But if you're peel. gonna if you're gonna pipe up and say you don't like this, I'm gonna. Have no, I, I was gonna say that I, I generally prefer my rums at uh, fifteen hundred and seventy uh, grams per hectoliter volatile compounds or below, uh, and this one's at fifteen seventy one, and I find it quite enjoyable. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, Chris, Chris just exposed our nerdiness. Um, we, 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 no, it's just literally listed on the bottle. So, so the volatile compounds. <laughs> I'm, I'm, going, I'm, going to, I'm going to have a short version of this. Uh, the vol- there's a short version? It's a short version. So volatile compounds are going to be congeners, <laughs> esters. It's going to be all those things inside the the, the, the spirit that's that's created, uh, not just during fermentation, but also distillation, or with a thorough to distillation. And for a while there, there were some people out there that were claiming their volatile compounds as their ester count. Mm-hmm. And we don't want to do that. We want to be very clear about it. So our ester count on this one is 422. And what did you say the, uh, the volatile compound? Uh, 1571. 1571. Uh, now, and your, me, your you know, dosage I, is zero. Zero. We're going zero dosage on this one. Mm-hmm. And dosage is the sweetener that you put in a lot of times, right? You're wrong. No? No, I'm it's wrong. not a sweetener. What is it? <laughs> That's it. Chris, kick his ass. <laughs> no. Uh, no. So, okay. But there's zero yeah. dosage. No, no, do, dosage. You're, you're half right. So dosage is that toast, uh, sucrose, toast, toasted sugar that we use in sparse amounts in most of our cognacs and some of our rums. And we're talking 14 grams per liter on the high end. Sometimes the highest is 20, but usually it's uh, like the three stars, like eight. A lot of times it's zero. I'm using a very sparse amount, and we're talking less than a quarter ounce, like on a point on, on, a, on eight uh, grams per liter. And it's just there to bring out other flavors. And when you all said it earlier today, when you when you said you it's, put it's in a like l- a pinch of salt on meat, it brings exactly. out the other. You're flavors. not trying to make it salty. You're bringing <coughs> out other flavors. And like Chris talked about earlier, using just a little bit, just a touch of that simple, just to bring out the other flavors. Same thing. But it's very frowned upon in Jamaica, um, you know. And just you know, we're, we're, we want to make our rums uh, uh, the best we can. That's just the best way to do it in Jamaica. I, I feel like. This rum also has kind of a dryness to the finish that's Absolutely. Really, really interesting. You know, what I can add to that comment, the, to all that information about dosage and, and the different numbers that were given, um, I just want to say rum good. <laughs> rum good. Uh, eye volatile. Eye volatile. Eye volatile <laughs> compound. You say dosage. I say I like another dosage. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take another 14 grams later uh, on that No, one. this is delightful, and this is something I will be rushing to the uh, to the store yeah. to try to get. So later uh, this year, we have a Barbados 2011. It'll have an orange label with Barbados flora and fauna on there. Mm-hmm. We're going to have a Peru and eventually an Australian one. Okay. Uh, what's the retail for this? Give or take. Probably about seventy-five. Okay, Probably. worth every penny. So I mean, it's, it's really it delightful. I give it. Hey, I, you know, this is delicious. It's, uh, you know what? I, so one of the things about this too, you mentioned banana right off the front, and it is, and it has that, uh, it has that slight astringency, like you know, the little strips of it that you get that are right next to the peel. Mm-hmm. It has that astringency that that uh, kind of contains, but then there's also this little sweet kiss that you get after you swallow. That lingers. That is not going on the album, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> the sloppy episode, ladies and gentlemen. Are two four zero. Two four zero. Are you guys making this? Are you guys making this naughty? But I do. I do recall. I do recall reading that when I was doing my research on the uh, when I did on this. the vodka martini. <laughs> Okay. Okay, it got That's quiet a, there for a moment. That was, <laughs> that was awkward. I'm trying to listen about the that, martini. That was awkward. <laughs> I, got, I got Stabby McGee over here. It's 2 4 It's 2 4 Stabby <laughs> McGee and I Martini. I, I have no idea what you were trying to say, Ian. I really don't. <laughs> Perhaps this would be a good place to say, uh, let's take a break. Be back I, for a well, final segment. I was trying to tell you. Rum good. Rum good. <laughs> and you are correct, sir. Uh, rum good, and uh, I would know because I the police. <laughs> I'm the police. We'll be right back I with our rum. final segment. It's uh, smoking and toasting. I smoking and toasting. <laughs> Welcome back. It is uh, 
Smoking and Toasting Show number 240. We are brought to you by MyCigarShirts.com. Great uh, shirts for cigar lovers on the web because cigars. Cigars. So, t- so time being, anyway. You caught me enjoying, <laughs> uh, like right on that, you caught me enjoying this mouthful of this Jamaica It is so wonderful, plantation, this Plantation, which is yeah, amazing. Um, and, and it is just come back. It's got this very, very late rum hug that just comes up and warms you like a wonderful uh, moment of, of something we probably shouldn't talk about. Um, we um, mentioned the Rob Report has this list of their best cigars, top 10 cigars of the year for 2021, and I thought I would share these with you really quick, knowing that the Rob Report is sometimes oh. more about appearances uh, than I actual. I need to get a, uh, do they have the prices on it? Because I need to uh, start adding up this list. All right, all right, so you can add up the list. The first yeah, on. one is the Cohiba Royale. Cohiba Royale. The fullest bodied Cohiba to date. Can't possibly any, be anything expensive about Cohibas. Also uh, marks the first time this celebrated brand has been hand rolled in Honduras. Uh, handsomely packaged in a semi circular dome shaped cigar chest. Uh, it's 25 bucks a stick. Uh, then the reinvention, the, under the category of reinvention, they've said that the Fonseca. Uh-huh. Uh, will uh, will qualify here. Uh, Fonseca has always been a medium to mild smoke, but in 2019, the brand was sold to my father's cigars, headquartered in uh, Esteli. And in terms of cigar making philosophy, it, they say it was akin to swapping a classic BMW Straight Six for a Detroit V8. Uh, the new Fonseca, as rolled by my father's cigars, remains smooth yet noticeably more powerful. Uh, the prices are from seven to eleven dollars. Per stick, uh, the Davidoff Robusto Intenso, uh, with the original limited edition of this medium rich Robusto, sold, sold out after it was introduced in 2005. It kicked off a mission by the Davidoff Master Blenders to duplicate it. This reincarnation is out and available now, and it's thirty-two dollars per stick. Uh, and then the reblend uh, they chose was the Regius 2020. An extremely limited luxury brand uh, that uh, offers a new blend every year of its vintages of Nicaraguan tobacco. You say and luxury brand. In the Placencia factory in Esteli. Uh, and um, all pair well, they say, with the uh, sweet smokiness of either, either a uh, 2020 Lagavulin Distiller's Edition or a Lafroy 10 year old Sherry Oak finish. $16 per stick. Uh, the CAO Vision. Other than its spectacularly modern, white lacquered, LED-lit humidor box, of course the Rob Report would be lured in by the LED-lit box. That is LED a good-looking cigar, box. and it's a good yeah, cigar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's the new Nicaraguan blend of the CAO Vision, $19 on that one. Uh, the Placencia Alma Fuerte 601, 601 Hexagon, which is a very good cigar, it's by the beautiful, way. It's beautiful, too. Uh, it like, is, that is like one of the most it is wonderful cigars to behold. twenty one dollars uh, then line extensions, J.C. Newman Diamond Crown, Maximus Robusto. What's funny here is that I'm always used to Diamond Crown being a really expensive cigar. It's actually one of the least expensive ones on this list at $12. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, the Nicaraguan cigar, they chose the Camacho Nicaraguan, uh, $9.50. And the new series, they chose the Trinidad Espiritu Series number 2, a very good cigar. We've uh, talked about it here on the show. Yeah. Uh, and it is ten to eleven dollars. And finally, the anniversary edition Monte Cristo nineteen thirty five anniversary Nicaragua. Oh, that yeah. sounds familiar. Uh-huh. Which they list at ten fifty to seventeen fifty. Where the heck on. do you get one for ten? Oh, yeah. they probably have a very small. Yeah, very small. One. Yeah, it's it's the uh, tiny you know, like the ones that come in the little tin are probably ten bucks a piece. Uh, so if you try this whole list, and this is one of the least expensive Rob Report lists we yes. ever right because there was no <laughs> ever thousand, there was no thousand dollar cigar experience. Yes. If you try the whole list, you will spend one hundred and seventy four dollars. Actually, for ten cigars, that comes out to what seventeen bucks a cigar. Ten great cigars, right? That's, you know, I, I, that's I, not I, as bad as you might think. I, I just think that it's it's wonderful that this national publication is listening to to your concerns and adjusting their publication <laughs> appropriately. That's right, right, because they were way too pricey last. Right, time. you bring those cigars down to seventeen dollars average, we're all over them, <laughs> like mowing the lawn with them. Mm-hmm. Or not. Or not. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> all right. Final segment, guys. What are we tasting in our last uh, last go round here? 
Uh, something. This is we're making up on a promise, a broken promise. Well, not a broken promise, one that we couldn't follow up on. So uh, if you remember, like the last time that, that we were on the show, when I had the lovely backs with me, we were going to unveil the new uh, Citadel. Yes. And, and unfortunately, it, the, it showed up at FedEx that night at my house after the show. So, but no. Uh, why am I getting shaved and a haircut two bits for for this this unveiling here? Ian never really knows which button he's pushing. He just <laughs> kind of pushes a button on there. I think he thought he was giving you the fart sound effect or the. Okay, yeah. now see the boing. That makes yeah, sense. Yeah, the, the boing, boing makes more sense. Yes. All right, so. This is the new Citadel Jardin de Té. All it right, is... so you you talked about this the last time you were here, Careful, get, yeah. but we didn't have a chance to uh, actually sample it. Yeah, Jardin so this is going to be the lighter side of Citadel. Now, we, we, we've proud ourselves uh, uh, on the fact that Citadel is a nice juniper-forward uh, classic dry gin. Mm -hmm. This is going to be a lot toned down on the juniper. Um, yeah, I like that. Now, a lot of people love the juniper gin. I like the less juniper gin. This is going to be the Citadel well, for you, my friend. One okay. of the so, nice things about gin in general, though, is you can always say, you know what? This gin is less juniper and some of them are made that way. It's a beautiful thing. Citadel's uh, one that say we that, always have in house. Say that really fast five times. Cannot, this gin is I less juniper This gin is less juniper y. Like, it's a little mushy. <laughs> I love how at a certain point Doc now just waits. Now shaving haircut too big. Yeah, Come on. right. right. <laughs> I, lo I love at a certain point Doc just waits and lets it just <laughs> lets it just sink in. Are you done? <laughs> so uh, this is the Citadel. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's an interesting process and uh, it's it, it's something that's new to me at least. Um, so, uh, as I said, we're going to tone down the juniper, a lot more citrus notes. We're actually taking original Citadel and blending it with two other uh, uh, gins that we're doing cold uh, uh, distillation on. Uh, and one is going to be we're using a yuzu citrus, and we're using the entire citrus, whereas original Citadel is using the peel. And this, we're using the entire piece of the yuzu citrus, and also something called a melon charente. It's a French cantaloupe, if you will. It's only available there in the, uh, the Charente area of Cognac. And the inspiration behind this was Debbie Gabriel uh, is the wife of Alexander Gabriel. She's an American. Um, and, uh, That's why it's Gabriel and not Gabrielle. Got it. Yeah. So, uh, but no. So she spent the most time at the chateau in forever during COVID shutdown. They have a small place in Paris that she likes to spend, kind of go back and forth, back and forth. Uh, but so she was like stuck at at, uh, at Bob Bonnet like the entire time. So to fill her time, her downtime, like a lot of people, she started a garden, and this was the inspiration behind that. That she planted some of this melon chante. Now the yuzu citrus, that's an actually an Oriental, uh, uh, a Japanese, Japanese lemon, yeah, yeah, Japanese. Um, so um, you know that I don't think she was growing that actually in the garden though, but the, the melon chante she was. So the idea behind it is lighter, more citrus forward, uh, more gardening. In fact, jardinete means summer garden. So yeah. and, and that's enough y yammer out of me. I'm gonna pour a little bit, and then Chris is going to do his. Uh, Magic. Yeah, I was about to say soundboards are great, but I've got the best sound effect of all time. Really? No, you're absolutely right. It's although the most cheerful noise ever. Although I will admit, no, he's clean. There's been there's been less of that at my house since you told me that I shouldn't be shaking my martinis. Great. I now stir my martinis and they are better. Thank you. I have become a martini stirrer. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was always doing the James Bond thing, you know, shaken, not stirred. But as it turns out, uh, uh, Ian Fleming did a great disservice to the uh, spirit uh, and well, cocktail I mean, it's community. A, it's a matter of preference. My wife likes her martinis shaken. I, well, but she likes dirty vodka martinis. I'm sorry, dirty kangaroos. Yes. Anyway, so, but I like a gin martini. I definitely like it stirred. That's a naughty kangaroo. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it certainly That's brings... That's a naughty kangaroo. It certainly, <laughs> certainly brings some visual images to mind of doing the research. Um, but yes. Uh, well, uh, and I like dirty martinis as well. But oh, you can uh, smell orange and lemon right off the top of this. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, oh shit! See, sloppy episode two four zero oh, <laughs> two four zero. Oh. <laughs> so uh, the, the, right. the 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 halfway finger. to three hundred, gentlemen. Yes. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I, at this point, I'll be surprised if we make it to 300. <laughs> All it's right, not so happening I, today. I still need a uh, one, one of Adam. those. Adam, did I pass you one of these yet? Do you have one of these? 
I still think right. that dirty kangaroo we'll is like some some you know saucy talk amongst British aristocracy. It, hey, well, aren't you the dirty kangaroo? <laughs> <laughs> See, to me, it sounds like one of those uh, positions that uh, you only read about in the gonna... Kama Sutra, the dirty kangaroo. Um, but yes. <laughs> I, we have <laughs> it's it's the naughty kangaroo now. The naughty kangaroo. Then instead of you get a dirty martini, or you yeah. can get a naughty kangaroo. kangaroo yeah. <laughs> uh, it reminds me, and I've shared this on the show before, but I had a good friend when I lived in Philadelphia that his wife loved dirty martinis, and she used to say to the bartender, "I'd like a dirty martini, three olives, so dirty you can still see the lipstick on the glass." That was the way she would order. I mean, full disclosure, that was a story from like six years ago. You can totally order a dirty vodka martini and it won't require any sort of like research out of you. Okay. I'll just make you the drink. It's good, fine. Good to know. Good to know. All right. So first we're tasting the Citadel. All right. And this is, again. Citadel Jardin d'Ate. Jardin d'Ate, which is garden. What is it? Summer garden. Summer garden. Okay. This smells so good. Oh, see, I love this. And, and again, I... I'm more drawn towards the less junipery gins, so this is right up my this alley. This smells so fruity, and then mm-hmm. a little bit of leafy green kind of like that. That melon well, just pops. It's like super the like melon, melon yeah. is great. Like honeydew. Yeah, no, I range. love yeah. this. This is one mm. melon and citrus lemony. Oh, wonderful! And it tastes just like it did that. There's a little mm. bit of lemon on the that just kind of rides through the whole thing. It's yes. so nice, like in the best oh. way. Love this. One yeah. of my favorite gins ever. So thank you. I, 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 and believe me, we're excited about it. Because, you know, you've seen our old Tom, and we had the reserve. Uh, but I thought, you know, this one's going to be just a, a little bit more for everyone. Um, you know, the, as I said, you know, original Citadel, Juniper Forward, it's just a nice, mm-hmm. balanced, classic gin where we're not trying to reinvent the wheel. Um, this one is definitely something that, that we wanted to be different, but, yeah, extremely approachable because uh, some of our special, as we call the extreme, the, the extreme uh, that we do release, um, one being the Old Tom, we released one uh, called Season of the Witch. It was smoked gin. Oh, I nice. only had one bottle. I gave it to Kim Paul. Um, and we had one, one of my favorites. Oh, my goodness. This one was called the uh, uh, Wild Blossom, and we actually infused cherry blossoms after distillation. Ooh. We didn't ever brought it to the United States because the TTB would not let us call it gin because the, the blossom came after came the distillation. Came after the distillation, I yeah. told Guillaume, that's my boss. I go, just lie to him. Tell him it's in there. He goes, I don't want to lie to the federal government. I go, I do every April. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> hey. But, but, but my point is, these are all, for the most part, they're aged gin. Three months and, later, you know. Docs is getting um, <laughs> audited. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Honey, there's uh, there's some auditor guys at our door. Uh, yeah, yeah, there would be a uh, I. R-S. I-R-S. Yeah. <laughs> From what I understand, by the way, there are now actually really and truly three people that work for the IRS. <laughs> So um, your chances of getting audited. So have fun, kids. Probably (laughs) folks go crazy. (laughs) Fairly low. All right. So this gin is so delicious. So it really is, and I've finished mine off already, which has me now meandering towards this cocktail. So Chris, what uh, is this cocktail? Did you use the Citadel in this? I I did, and uh, much of the theme of the episode with uh, with Docs, I went in blind. I have not tasted this prior. All right. So what did you make? Uh, so I made a wonderful cocktail with a perfectly innocent name called a White Lady, commonly okay. attributed, I believe, to the uh, Savoy cocktail book in 1930. Okay. Or as I commonly tell people, it's a gin lemon drop. Mm-hmm. It's okay. Dry gin, lemon juice, and well, or- I can smell a little of that on the nose. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. And then uh, orange liqueur, or in this case, Pierre Ferrand dry curacao. Much more than a bar spoon in this case. I think the original recipe calls for Cointreau, but I'm not sure they make that anymore. Do they make that anymore? I've, I, I, I don't know. That's not, don't even, don't even why would you need it? Does Alan Denny no, make that? No, Cointreau is a wonderful product. <laughs> uh, well, this is this is wonderful. Now, this reminds me of one of those cocktails that this is so, so, so dangerous because it doesn't really taste that boozy. And, and like, it almost but, tastes like just like a lemonade or a, a really good refreshing summer a, drink. Yeah. There's a booziness to it, but it's hidden under that lemon. Yeah. A string so, so a really cool thing about this particular cocktail, like being a nice three-ingredient cocktail that's really clean, really simple, is it also traditionally has the optional ability for you to add egg white. Mm-hmm. If you want this to be like a Creamy. little bit richer, yeah, yeah. a little, little creamier, bit more yeah. luxurious. Like I like doing that um, more like after the sun sets, but like while the like sun's still out, it's still hot, like I'll drink it just like this. See, this, this is... This, Thinks, this makes me think something crisp. that should be made by the pitcher. 
Now, this one's going to be available everywhere. It's not going away. It's, it's a permanent a Citadel. Station. It's a permanent thing. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's at a couple of shelves right now, but as soon as we did, we just got it in a couple a couple weeks ago. So this is uh, about to hit the shelves. Then you're saying? Yeah, it's out there. It's out a few places already. Yeah. I, I, I've seen it at uh, Lee's Liquor. Uh, I know that uh, Ryan's is bringing it in. Um, where have I seen? Oh, uh, uh, Pre uh, Premier Liquors on on Yale for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so Chris, remind me. I'm got I got I got brain fuzz here. What's the difference between a white lady and a daisy? Uh, not a whole lot at all. Well, I think I believe the white lady is just a variation on a slightly daisy. Slightly less citrus, maybe. Yeah, I, I, or I think a slightly less liqueur. Uh, I think the the daisy they'll generally like sort of split. Um, oftentimes, like the orange liqueur with like something like a yellow, like a yellow or like a green chartreuse, they'll add Ooh. like an herbal element. I think mm -hmm. it's like the more accepted like modern daisy, but ancestrally speaking, nothing. Right, like that's how the. Depending who you ask, uh, like that's how a lot of people believe the margarita got its name, is it's just a daisy. Mm -hmm. And like this is literally within a quarter ounce of how I make margaritas. Um, obviously, like subbing lime and tequila instead of gin and lemon. Mm -hmm. But it's basically the same recipe I would use to make a margarita, which is a translation of a classic daisy. Okay. Makes sense. And what well, is the classic daisy? It is citrus and orange liqueur. And gin. And gin. Well, no, the daisy was just a, a category all into itself. I thought a daisy was a gin. No. So when the, you could get a gin daisy, you could get a whiskey daisy, you can get a brandy daisy, just the same as you could get it like a brandy cocktail or a gin cocktail or anything sort of along that. It was just its own category. Like I always thought it was a gin. The more you know. I remember reading something about brandy daisy when I was looking mm -hmm. for that research on the uh, vodka martini in the Playboy. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. It's a pretty good article. Yeah, it's wonderful articles. Some people say you high should, quality journalism. Some people say they don't read. You know, some people falsely claim to read the articles. Others of us really enjoy. Brandy Daisy wasn't the she in the middle of one of those? I believe so. Yeah, I believe like, so. What, what, she missed July. <laughs> I believe she was. Some sort of chain was going on. I don't know what it was. Uh, uh, folks, 1978. What a year. Yeah, what have we done? Yeah, yeah. Kurt, Kurt Look what we've become, cynical. everybody. Look what we've become. Yeah, this is what happens when you drink a lot of different spirits in one show and some cocktails to boot and uh, some really wonderful craft beers well guys i cannot thank you enough for being on the show uh it is always a pleasure to have either of you on to have both of you in the same episode is uh is a real treat so thank so thank you we appreciate all of your uh efforts to continue to promote and you know get people excited about this uh, crazy industry in which we uh live and, and breathe and uh I, what i love though about both of you guys, it, you express it in a very different way, but your passion for what you do and for this stuff is is what makes it a lot of fun to have you on the show. Do we have 30 seconds for one more dumb thing? We do. Okay, so yeah. I forgot the dumb thing. Two, four, it's oh. It's not dumb. It's not, Two, it's not, it's four, not dumb. Oh. Uh, I found this actually for the first time at Total Wine in a in, in Nashville, but it's a bottled <laughs> old-fashioned. Can you tell me what that label was right there? Uh, made that, with plantation. I believe rum. that says made with plantation made rum. Made with plantation rum. It's, ah. yeah, it's, got, it's got our logo right there. Now, okay, so we have to try some of this. I, I, I never had. I've never had this before. Now I will say this: um, it, 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 it's not made by us. It's a separate company it's, that's making the rum old fashioned with our rum. Using your rum to make their and old fashioned. I thought it'd just be a nice little dessert for the idea of our barrel partners. Well, this is a partner that's you know not barrel partner, but they're using our. <laughs> they're stuff. a partner nonetheless. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I love this. It's called the brand. The brand is called Craft House. Craft House. Yeah, that's the rum old fashioned. Is that the same one that partners with uh, Charles Jolie? Do you know? No. For like the Craft House like tools. And I have. <laughs> I, I don't know. I've never heard of this stuff. We, we saw, as I said, we saw it for the first time in a total wine in Nashville. So you just stumbled across this. You yeah, didn't know it existed, right? We're going that way. Did this you already pass one there? Uh, Adam's got it. Adam's yep. got it. I got it. Adam's got it. I got By it. By the way, I have been screwing up the rotation the entire day. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's puff, puff, give. Puff, puff, give. I've, <laughs> I've been effing up the rotation. Sip, sip, pass. <laughs> I've been effing up the rotation all day. Wow. Gentlemen. It's got an interesting uh, interesting nose to it. Here's it does up, have an like interesting address. nose. Cheers to all of you. Cheers, cheers, cheers. And, uh, and to everyone who has uh, made it through with us this far on episode 240. We salute you and we love you and you're awesome. That's not and bad. thanks for joining us for, for those about smoking to dox. a <laughs> We salute you. <laughs> Michael Duckworth from True Anomaly Brewing joins us on next week's show. That'll Have a great awesome. week, my friend. And uh, mm. it's actually surprisingly good. That's better,
Yeah. <laughs> For a cocktail in uh, a can? Just a bar spoon of uh, dry curacao. Cheers, y'all. Sloppy episode.